All the framings were wrecked. Did they All the frames f- were wrecked. Did they at least put a fragile sticker? No, on no, no, oh my. no, no, wow. no fragile sticker. No, no popcorn. <laughs> no f- anything. It was Shh. wild. I'm surprised they didn't throw a rattlesnake in there. I mean, it, it was it was like comically worse. funny how, how how little they cared about it. Hi guys, this is Waiting to Dry. I'm Josh Lawyer. I'm Sergio Lopez. And today we have Aaron Nagel. Hello. <laughs> hey. What's up, man? Hi. Uh, th- Any re- relation to Patrick Nagel? No, all no right. relation. You get that no, at I, all? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 a lot. Yeah. I'm a fan, so that's nice. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Uh, on, uh, my, I just saw on my phone that my phone autocorrect your name to... Aaron Bagel. Yeah. So yeah. did you get that a lot as well? That's what we figured. Yeah. Like. I have friends that call me Bagel from uh, Yeah. That's 20 cool. years ago or something. Yeah. yeah. Figure it was kindergarten from then on. Yeah. Torment. Yeah. 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 That's just something you can't even change. You, you can't even blame your parents for that because it's not like they named you that. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's yeah just, I'm fine with it. Hey, cool. It could uh, be worse. <laughs> This is uh, Aaron. You're our first guest. So we were just saying that uh, we both have never met till today. Yeah. <laughs> so there might be some awkward uh, <laughs> moments in this, uh, but whatever, we'll figure yeah, it out. We're familiar <clears> with <throat> each other's work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah definitely. Sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Because uh, we've both been fans of yours for a long time. So it's really cool. That likewise. Yeah. You sounded like you were pretty uh, stoked to be on it. So this is awesome to have you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so if it. God, that was a horrible, like, a uh, throat clear. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, uh, are you native t- uh, to the Bay Area? Yeah, yeah, East Bay. So oh, Berkeley, nice. Oakland. Born and okay. raised. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you guys too? Yeah. Uh, up here? Yeah, for the most part. I, I lived in Central California for uh, a couple of years, but Bay Area, not here, San Mateo and oh, okay. East Palo Alto and that kind of area. Yeah, I'm born and raised here in Santa Rosa. So, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so all Bay Area, suck it, rest of the world. <laughs> uh, cool. And uh, I, were you always a painter? Uh, no. Obviously you mean like I've, always, always? Obviously, <laughs> I've done my research. <laughs> I've been painting for, I've been painting and showing for 10 years nice. or so. So about the same time I started, I think. <laughs> and I don't know if you're the same way, Sergio. 10 years? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I've been painting, like started as a student painting. So I've been painting for, in oils for about 16 years now. So nice. yeah. I remember I saw, uh, a sh- the first time I saw your work, it was in, uh, Destructure yeah. mm-hmm. years ago. Yeah. <clears throat> that was, so that was my first show. That was oh, really? 2008. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, and you guys both showed there too, right? I, I've, sh- I've never shown Destructure, okay. no. How dare you? But you did right after me, I feel like, or it's yeah. within a year. Yeah. I showed with them. Yeah, I think I showed with them like r- r- maybe right after you or something. Yeah. And I was like, how dare he? <laughs> like, <laughs> great. Well, I'll just put my shit up here. And just, <laughs> uh, but yeah. <clears throat> no, the first time I saw your work was, um, I want to say 2010 or 11, whenever that White Wall show was. Um, uh was it 2010 or 11? I mean, you've probably shown a few times at White Walls yeah, before. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. It, was a, it was a group show. Um, no, I think it was actually a, a solo show in the main room there. That, okay. Um, yeah, I don't remember the name of the of the exhibition, but you were doing the the women with the, like, black. Um, I think one of them was a girl that had, like, an arrow in her body. Yeah. Something yeah, like that. that yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's cool. Uh, you, you tend to have, like uh like a very similar aesthetic uh, like f- it's weird because like if i see a portrait done by you i'm like oh that's Aaron nagel i don't even have to like look it's yeah it's kind of that's, that's great <laughs> yeah, yeah that's i'm glad to hear that it doesn't t- it's hard for me to see that mm. i think i think yeah. just as painters yeah yeah i can obviously see it in other artists right, right. So, but that's <laughs> the goal for sure yeah for sure yeah. you don't want to be lumped up into like the same everyone paints this way kind of uh art school student from i'm just kidding i'm just talking shit about, <laughs> about I, art school students i conveniently uh, tuned out <laughs> uh did you go to art school no nice no i was a <laughs> i was a band guy after like 
in high school and after high school. Uh, I think I remember so hearing I did about that. that. Right, for, you were in punk bands. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I did that for a while, mm-hmm. like and le- then was they were like legit punk bands too, right? I mean, t- we toured. Yeah. Like it, we made yeah. a living doing That's it for awesome. a while. That's legit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then uh, the art. I've always done art, but the art as a career kind of came out of that because mm-hmm. I was doing art for bands. I started mm-hmm. doing like album covers and. That's uh, cool. Shirts and stuff like that. Mm. And that was the, I would have never otherwise huh. like doodled. <laughs> now I did doodle, but I would have never pursued it as a career. It never seemed like a, an option, an option. Huh. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I think I remember reading somewhere you had a, a artist in your family though, as well. My uncle was a graphic designer. Oh, okay. It, like a, but you know, eighties where there's no computer. So it was yeah. like actual graphic design. Yeah, exactly. right. <laughs> um, and my dad is a musician. Huh. Oh, so, okay. That's and there's cool. a, so there's a lot of parallels with, with music and art totally. sure, as a mm-hmm. career yeah. and both being awful. So, <laughs> <laughs> totally. so, uh, what instrument did you play? I played, uh, in the band that we toured the most was, I was a trumpet player. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so my dad was a jazz musician. Oh, nice. That's so awesome. I grew up playing trumpet in huh. school. Huh jazz stuff mm-hmm. so and then did your dad relate to your guys music when he yeah I, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they That's were cool. my parents were super supportive my dad was super supportive um it was obviously not his genre right right but yeah it was they were they couldn't have been more supportive really. that's cool was, yeah, and that's they awesome. were really good about saying like you know do this <laughs> as long as you can just you know right yeah. make sure you know you might have to supplement it at some point yeah for yeah, sure yeah did they handy. warn you about the yeah, perils totally. of being an artist full yeah time. and i kind of you could i mean my dad is crazy good but never at least when we were growing up he was never able to like just do music he had to have a day right. job right yeah. mm-hmm. so there was a very easy for me to see like well you even if you're wickedly talented and like it's that doesn't really mean anything for in, sure yeah. in music mm-hmm. which is the same same in art. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Mm-hmm. i have a full-time job um, yeah it's kind of part of the gig at least until mm-hmm. i'm able to not uh, <laughs> yeah and uh, it's uh, at the end of the day too like with like music and art uh you know where your parents are super supportive of it that's cool because they i think there's an understanding of like well there's a million jobs out there you know like if you fail it's like they're they're giving you the go-ahead to take the shot which is cool yeah Mm -hmm. you know uh you always hear uh like the the opposite of like oh make sure you go to college to like say like as a backup you know to your passion and right which you know might be good advice but when you're an artist you don't want to hear that kind of shit (laughs) yeah i think they were just you know as long as you have something that you like doing if you have to do something else that sucks at Mm -hmm. least you have the one thing right that's cool yeah i like it yeah Yeah. uh now i find it interesting because like i don't know if we've had anybody on the show who is like the child of like a professional creative more or less uh so wasn't jason avery uh was he? I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember either. <laughs> you were drunk, so you wouldn't remember. Either. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, you get to see it from that perspective. Like, oh, okay, that's what the future could look like. Right. <laughs> yeah. And the, again, even though I was under the delusions that I was going to be a band guy for the rest of my life. Right. Art still seemed like, well, that's that's not a career. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm a musician. I'm not an artist. That's ridiculous. Well, yeah, I didn't. I, and I wasn't painting then either, uh-huh. really. Um, I was like a sketchbook guy. Right. And that was it. Yeah. So mm. it wasn't until I was doing painting, like uh, album covers and shirts that I could actually then sell or people were interested in the prints. Mm-hmm. Then I was like, oh, like there's a at least a little bit of right, interest. For sure. Yeah. That's cool. And then you, you, you how'd you develop the like, were when you were doing like uh covers were you doing like uh figurative stuff or, or? i was always doing figurative stuff but they were real bad mm. for a while <laughs> like i was entirely self-taught so it was right you know they were monochromatic mm-hmm. uh as acrylic at first mm-hmm. there were no faces because i couldn't do them <laughs> yeah. right? so it's just bodies um and it just really gradually made it into like somewhat realism but right. it took mm-hmm. It took probably five or six years mm. to get there. Right. So the, mm. so by the time you showed at the structure, you were you were already pretty I was pretty just bad. getting the hang of it. Mm. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'd like to see those pictures uh uh of the 
the the structure sort of kind of compared to how you are now yeah it's it's different yeah <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, it's, it's not funny. i mean it's it's uh it's nice to look back at and like see progress for sure yeah, yeah. so it's painful to see some of it's them, also kind of I'm crazy sure. you know you see like something that you thought was the best you could ever do and <laughs> right then you look back at it and you're like man that's not that great no yeah yeah i mean i feel that way about 85 percent of my paintings yeah yeah pretty before much. i'm done with them almost yeah like, well, don't like that yeah um and it's like just we all do of, yeah, yeah for sure i think yeah. that's just the how it goes yeah. right and everyone gets mad at you for feeling that way <laughs> right it's perfect you know, like, right no it's not yeah um, don't ever admit that but that's why we get media. better <laughs> yeah hopefully right right yeah, yeah. I'm satisfied no. with it yeah yeah, yeah. That's cool. Uh, so do you think the, the, as far as when you see the progression, do you think that's like based off of like the, cause I've, I've transitioned to oil painting and I've realized that like building this depth of the person mm-hmm. is just so much like every like time I look, you know, I've only been doing oil painting for about a year now and the growth from that small time has been like huge I'm like, wow, it really sucked a year ago. Yeah. Um, it's, I think there's just a lot of depth to the medium. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, I mean, you could easily, and many people have just paint oils the rest of your life and right. still be, you know, still not be a master of it. For sure. If that's oh, a yeah. thing really, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I don't ever, once I started painting oils, I, I kind of never went back and then <laughs> still don't feel like I have the hang of it. Yeah, at all, which I like. I like mm-hmm. the challenge for sure. I'm yeah, zero definitely. confident about <laughs> stuff usually. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. what what direction do you think you'll go to to to, or which direction do you go towards to, to get better? Like I know a lot of people, they'll very much focus on like the brushwork and and really keying in on like the you know the the least amount of brushes, brush movements right. to make what I want or right. people focus that's on it's a, a good question actually that i'm not that <laughs> not that <laughs> i really admire that uh-huh. that's i just cannot paint like that yeah me neither um, yeah i've like watching lip king or any of those guys paint mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. sean cheatham like yeah th- they're so purposeful with each brushstroke and there's so much thought behind yeah. every one of them and mm-hmm. then that brushstroke goes in the right spot and then they don't touch it right and that's amazing to me <laughs> and it's just not Right, because that's kind of what you are like. I feel like you're striving towards right. You like brush work, like a you a sergeant guy. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> but we, I've actually started sort of get away from that a little bit. Mm-hmm. I was about to say like doing it that way is so hard and mentally exhausting that, um, yeah, it's just not what I I've kind of learned recently that's just not what my natural inclination is toward now. So I'm starting to go a bit more toward um building stuff up from like a softer edges and just sort of making it come together as it as it I guess in a certain way tightens up as I get closer and closer to finish. Hmm. So I'm I'm reproaching it a different way now. Right. I still really love um like nice chunky brushwork and stuff, but I think it's just not something that I will in the future like strive toward every time anymore. Like I have in the past. Yeah. I feel Mm. the same way. I used to paint a lot looser Mm -hmm. and it would be, it was, Mm -hmm. I'd have to force it to a certain extent. Yeah. If I don't think about it so much and just Mm -hmm. paint the way my brain wants to paint. Right. It's not not at all loose. Yeah. Which is fine. Uh Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's what I enjoy. And I don't try to fight it. I mean, there, there are parts of, that enjoy kind of like messing with you know gestural paint strokes but Mm -hmm. for for like faces and things i really want to pay that i really want to draw the eye to i i'm like that's my favorite thing to do is sit there and just knock out details and you know render a face out yeah i like it but i mean again if you look at a lip king Mm -hmm. like if you get in close to those paintings there's just not a lot there no yeah as far as like detail goes, but, uh-huh. but back a couple feet, mm-hmm. it's all yeah. as much as you need, yeah. which is really amazing to me. Yeah. It's like a magic trick or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's very crazy. Yeah. A few years ago, I saw one of his paintings in person for the first time and you look at them and they're really thinly painted. Actually, that was kind of a revelation mm-hmm. for me. It's like, oh, okay, that's actually not how I want my paintings to look like the surface. I want to build up the paint a little more than what he does too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, when I went to the Legion of Honor, they 
there was a painting I kind of walked by because I was like, that's not that great. And I walked back and then I looked back at it like like eight feet away. I was like, holy shit, that cloth work is like amazing. And I <laughs> went back to it. And then when you're really close, you're like, it looks so horrible from this, <laughs> from this distance. Yeah. Do you remember which one it was? Uh, I can't remember. I'm so mm-hmm. bad at names. Uh, would you, do you remember what it looked like at all? Other than the cloth? <laughs> all right. Uh, I'll drop really. it. <laughs> I know it was a guy, and I know the cloth was like brownish. <laughs> okay. Um, had some pattern work to it, I think, mm. but I can't really remember. It's like <laughs> overwhelming. That was, I went there for the first time this year, and it's just like overwhelming. I, it'd probably take me a couple of times before I remember some things. <laughs> right. Uh, <clears throat> But yeah, that's cool. So you, you work from models, right? You like, you, you, uh, get a model, you photograph her and yeah. then you, you work off. Of I work that. from the photo reference. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <clears throat> do you shoot all your own reference? I do. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't, uh, I don't know if I plan to do that always. Mm-hmm. I've always felt like I needed to. Yeah. Because I want it to be all mine. Right. Right. Um, but the more I do it, the more I'm kind of like <laughs> would like to get other people involved in that process. Oh uh, yeah, like I Same think I could just yeah. have much better reference material if yeah. I got some people, stylists and <laughs> producer people. And I, yeah. I really hate that process. <laughs> oh really? Is, <laughs> yeah, I hate it. It's which is a stupid thing to complain about. <laughs> uh, but it's not. I don't enjoy that part of it at all. The I, you're talking about you photographing and having to edit the photos? Is that what no? You're... Just the shooting, shooting models and trying to get the reference that I want. Uh, I don't. Oh. I find it hard. Mm. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, there's definitely people that are really skilled at ha- having a model do exactly what. Yeah, and luckily want. I work with the models. It's it, you know it's eighty ninety percent just them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so sure. if they're oh, yeah. good the the reference photos will be good so yeah. that's my trick yeah yeah but it's mine too is yeah it, is there something you tell the models because you always seem to have like i don't know it's like this uh, it's not even like an expression but it's uh, like if i look at your work in general like th- there is always like this intense kind of like I don't, it, it's not even like a like an on purpose intensity to the model. Yeah. And mm-hmm. maybe the pic maybe it's from you painting it, maybe it's not that intense in like a picture form. But right. I, I always feel like the models have this like behind like almost like, you know, when people say like smile with your eyes or whatever like right. that. There's like this like intensity that's not like super overt. Like you can't really like nail down what it is. It's just kind of there. Yeah. I uh I do tell them usually not to pose mm-hmm. and to try and look mad. Or like <laughs> try and be a little aggressive and a right. little bit yeah. statuesque and kind of regal, uh-huh. um, and you know it it tends to take a couple you know an hour before that starts to happen usually, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and they usually some, it's often the poses in between the poses that kind of end up working right. the best. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's so it's that and then me just selecting those specific shots out of like the six hundred or so that I that For I sure. end up shooting right. Yeah. That's the kind of the crazy thing about it. Yeah, but I do. That's the vibe I want. Mm-hmm. It's like a, a lot of confidence and like a little bit yeah. sinister kind of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I get annoyed sometimes if I like shoot a model and then the one I really like is kind of fuzzy and then the like the very next <laughs> shot is very similar. Yeah. So I just end up using the good shot for the reference and then pulling the other shot pulling for the, the detail details. from the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I'll do a lot of stuff in post mm-hmm. also like take a hand from one shot and a head from the other shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Change Frankenstein the way the it eyes up. are going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I've, I've, I've done that a couple of times, but I always get like, it's like something I'll notice, but no one else will. I'm like, it's a little yeah, unnatural. I totally, totally understand. Yeah. 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 Cause you know, it's not, right yeah. yeah it's like a little off it feels like a little stiff to me and i'm like god damn it yeah just wish it wasn't that way <laughs> uh, just wish i was better at photoshop or something <laughs> right uh, but that's cool <clears throat> where do you go about finding your models um usually through other models now yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that makes sense yeah it's yeah every once in a while i'll throw it out on instagram or something which uh-huh. we, which sometimes works i always but wonder it's, that yeah it's it's not a great avenue for it, but <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm in a, I'm like, I know so many models now right. that are really good. Uh-huh. And then other models see those, those paintings and they kind of are interested. And usually it's the yeah. models that are kind of into the art side yeah. of things and maybe they're artists mm-hmm. or, right. so it's, that works pretty well. I usually go down to LA for it lately just cause oh, there's really? more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've been trying to think about doing that. I've been thinking about doing that myself, just kind of booking a bunch of models and heading down there and doing it because there's just so many that are. Yeah. Every yeah, time yeah. You, I hit up a model, I'm like, hey, they're like, oh, I'm in LA. I'm like, damn it. Yeah, you should. It's not, I mean, when I do it, I go down, stay with friends, and then mm. just try and smush as many into, you know, a couple of days as I can. Yeah, and and then I'm smart. in the mode for it. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm not mad about having to stop painting to take pictures. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. My wife, we're both artists and she books a lot of the model shoots and I'm always furious because I'm like, damn it, I don't have time right now. I need to paint. <laughs> yeah. Like I, yeah. Yeah. I have a mil- I have like months of like photo shoots that I haven't even painted yet. Right. And mm-hmm. I don't have time to like photo like that. That's it's such a a quick thing to do, but it takes away a day that you could be painting and then you have to edit photos and all that good stuff. And it, yeah. uh, yeah, I'm kind of in your shoes where I just don't really enjoy that process, yeah, but you need it. So it's, it's, yeah. you know, I'm I trying d- to find a way to like get it done the way that is best. Yeah. You know, I, I do get really excited if the model does something where I'm like, Oh my God, that like, I never would have thought of that. And yeah. you, that's that's the thing I really enjoy about the photo shoots, but the rest I'm like, <sighs> me too. Yeah, mm-hmm. if they the, the ones I end up working with mm-hmm. like a second time or a third time is when it kind of gets a little more fun and mm-hmm. more, it's easier. Right, they kind of know what the you know they'll start bringing in stuff and yeah, it's, it's mm-hmm. really nice. It's really that's cool. When when you work with like I remember you used to do like the black hands. Did you dip mm-hmm. their hands in paint? I usually painted their hands with oh. acrylic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I've. I did it so much that I could not do it a couple times and and I can can fake black. The gold is not hard. I mean, it's not easy, easy. Uh The gold I can't fake and have to do it. But Uh uh, there was a couple shoots where I would shoot the model and then I would have my girlfriend do the hands and then I would paint her hands and then smush them into the same picture Uh so that I didn't have to do the paint at the, at the shoot with the Mm -hmm. model. That's cool. Yeah. (laughs) It's a pretty smart idea. (laughs) Yeah. Or just do my hands. Like, why do your women have such <laughs> chunky big, big hands? Man hands. <laughs> yeah, like it's a use style. My hands <laughs> it's a style thing. Uh, that's that's pretty smart. I've never actually thought about it that way. Yeah, there's a. I don't do as much of it, but I mean, I see that pro artists do that a lot. Like right. they use use a mannequin to to get cloth. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I've or seen they're that. doing. So I've started to do that a little bit more, and just realize that there's not. I don't have to be so literal. I can add stuff and right. as long as it's kind of under the same, same lighting mm-hmm. right. ish, like it, it'll tend to look okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just have to get over that mental block of like, I know it's not right because it's <laughs> not, and I never saw it that right. way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and once I do, it's usually okay. Yeah. That's cool. Are you somebody who stays pretty close to the reference when you're painting? Yeah. 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 I mean, I've seen the pictures that you take and then the model. I'm like, yep, that's her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't mess with them too much. I'll, I'll sometimes mess with the reference, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. once the paint happens, I prefer not to have to figure stuff out as mm-hmm. much. Yeah. I'm the same way. Yeah. It, and, and it happens like a background thing won't work or something won't be working in the paint and I'll have to go back and kind of reassess, but then it just mm-hmm. really makes the process harder. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 I used to be better at, inventing stuff but nowadays i've been working from photos like pretty uh literally now that i can't do that either anymore right yeah Yeah. that's crazy it's also when i look back at old stuff it's just the creativity comes from like me not like almost being way more fearless than i am now (laughs) i was just like let's figure it out and i always have to like kind of tell remind myself to just try it and fail yeah, but I'm so. I feel like the older I get, the more I'm like afraid of failing at my painting, <clears throat> and not even in like a who cares what other people think, but just like a, I don't want to. I don't want to be mad at this painting. I yeah, be I totally relate to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I have. <clears throat> I usually throw away like, to you know, three or four a year. Yeah, ish. We should have told everyone to plug their ears for that part. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. A couple but days. just, you know, you it's some just dumpster something, divers around your house. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I worked on it for a week and I know it's not going to work, right. but every once in a while I'll work on it for a month right? and know it's, and then I'll just be like, I got to give up. Yeah. Um, hopefully that, I mean, it's really a drag <laughs> when yeah. that happens, but 
it, you know, theoretically I learned something in that process and then yeah. it won't happen the next time, but mm-hmm. we'll, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. That's the hope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or at least learn not to do something that you tried or whatever. Yeah. Or just, you, then I know one more, th- or there's one more thing I know that doesn't work. Right. Like, cause every once in a while there, and I've, I'm getting better at it, but there's things that when you see a picture of something, right. your brain doesn't question it because it's right. a picture and you know that it's real life. Right. Uh-huh. If you saw a painting of that exact same thing, maybe there's some kind of weird foreshortening of a limb or like something mm-hmm. your 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 brain goes like, Oh, that's not right. Right. Because it's not an image. And so I'm learning right. to kind of pick out those things. Right. Um the things that don't translate as well because they're different they're different mediums. Like uh-huh. yeah. and the I'm not trying to photo i'm not a photo realist guy right Right. yeah because those guys they'll do stuff like that and you're like oh they pulled that off but there's things that there's tricks photo realists do where they get they'll like make things fuzzy or something yeah well you do (laughs) things that like a camera does right which makes sense you know like flash shadows and like all all that kind of stuff exactly um yeah and i'm not i'm not as interested in that stuff i appreciate it when i see it for Mm -hmm. sure yeah uh, that's cool. You've been recently like painting a shit ton of cloth stuff. Yeah. <laughs> which is cool, but it looks tedious. It's as crazy hell. tedious. <laughs> I just finished a painting that it took uh, about two months and it's solid cloth. Wow. Um, oh, is that the one where it looks like there's a body? Yeah, in there's it? a body. Oh, in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that one's awesome. Was there yeah. an actual body underneath uh-huh. that? Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. I was wondering, I was like, did he just make, like, kind of how we were talking about earlier, where yeah. I was like, did he just stuff like something underneath? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a body. I was shooting fabric. I have this big, long length of fabric, and mm-hmm. I was shooting it in my living room on the floor. And I try and do it at certain times of the day to get uh, some natural light and some artificial light and try uh-huh. and get different light sources on it. Right. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> my girlfriend was there and got under it for me. And at the time, this was like at the end of last year, Mm -hmm. I kind of thought it was too dark. Like it Hmm. looks like a body, you know, uh, under a sheet. Right. It's like, it's kind of morbid. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. It (laughs) seemed very dark, even though the light is not dark at Mm -hmm. all. Uh Um, But after the last show I had in the show prep and it was just kind of a rough time, I was then like, yeah, I want to, I want to paint something dark. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and also torture myself with the process. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that that um, I mean, that's kind of cool. The the darkness behind it, because it, I mean, it because the painting is so beautiful that it just you could easily con- make that connection between beauty and death and all that stuff. You know? So. Yeah, I'm wondering how people will find it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I when it's when it's all done. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so so you're not done with it yet. It's it's like. I glazed a little bit last night mm-hmm. just to push some darks back and uh-huh. it's, 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 you know, 99% done. Mm-hmm. I haven't signed okay. it yet or mm-hmm. anything, but I'm, I'm just kind of making sure it's, it's, everything is good now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm, I'm working on other stuff. So it's, it's mostly done. When I started seeing the cloth stuff, I was like, Oh fuck. Like, cause first of all, I, uh, I, I just always have trouble painting cloth. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just a thing where I think it, you know the people that do like the really loose bl- brush stroke stuff they can do it where you know the closer you get obviously it looks just like an abstract thing but right. when you pull back you're like wow that's amazing and uh mm-hmm. the way i paint uh it's like i think i have to commit a ton of time to um do do anything in that similar realm but and then i start seeing you doing this like super detailed cloth stuff and like Holy fuck. Like, yeah. Th- that, uh, that just seems so just, it's time hard. Consuming. It's hard. Yeah. It's time consuming. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. gotten more time consuming. <laughs> the, the idea behind it, was that like an aesthetic thing that you just were, uh, pulled towards or? Yeah. I did a painting, um, maybe at the end of 2016 or something that was a mm-hmm. commission that had some fabric in it. Okay. as just a, I got some fabric to try, which mm-hmm. I've done before. Um, and I just painted it in a way that I liked mm-hmm. finally, <laughs> like yeah. I, I took a lot of time with it and painted it more for me. I kind of felt the same way where fabric kind of lends itself to painterly, right. Painterly application of right, paint yeah. for lack totally of a better agree. word. Mm-hmm. Like same with hair. Like there's people that can like really just rock hair with very little right. information there. Yeah. They yeah. just like <laughs> smush down paint. It looks perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, and I tried that with a, with a painting, shortly before that where i used a palette knife for all the fabric mm-hmm. um 
which kind of worked. Right. But this, that particular painting, I did the fabric in a way that I liked. And so I just decided to do more of it. Mm-hmm. And I figured out that it was a light, it was a, it was not only painting it tighter, but a light source thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Right. So it's, if, if there's only one light source, it doesn't work for me. And I, mm. it, I just can't make it look interesting enough to justify all the, the time. In right. it. But if there's two and generally if they're, different temperatures right mm-hmm. you get a lot of weird stuff that happens with colors in mm-hmm. the in the folds and one side tends to look a lot different than the other side and there's just a lot more to 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 hmm. capture right. right yeah so so if you shoot a model with the cloth does it become just a little bit more tricky uh yeah but i'm i'm very aware of it now so i'll make sure lately i've been trying to paint with multiple light sources that are different temperatures as mm-hmm. just a, that's just what I'm into now. Right. Um, so that, that works with the, with the fabric. Nice. That's cool. So I just make sure the whole picture has a, a kind of uniform, different lighting scenario. Mm-hmm. I used to paint with a lot of, I uh, used to shoot with a lot of strobes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there'd be a real like sharp highlights and backlights. Right. And it'd be very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, like studio photography kind of stuff, right. yeah. which lends itself really easy to, it makes it easy to, to paint realistically that way. Right. Um, but I got kind of bored with it and the, the tones tend to be similar. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. And they have like the same highlights and yeah, it's just, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's hard to get that variation. Right. That was more interesting right now, like natural light on one side and artificial light on the other side right. is kind of what's been working for me. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I've seen that. And you have like backlight a lot of times mm-hmm. where it's like, yeah, sometimes I'll add that. Oh really? Yeah. The backlight, I just find sometimes with a, if there's nothing else in the background, mm-hmm. having a little bit of light around a ear or right. like a little bit about the hair just tends to define the figure a little bit more right. and, for sure. That so it doesn't sense. get lost. Yeah. Yeah. At least on one side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So you're Frankenstein like crazy. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah. I, I never thought that was the case because your stuff is so like uh, realistic to, or just like, so it, it, when you see the model, you're like, oh, he's very true to the model. Yeah. I'm and still so, trying to, I'm still trying to be as true as I can. Right. And yeah. trying to, trying to make a, th- I'm not trying to venture into non-realism any any time ever really unless i'm I'm writing on top of the painting which i guess is a little bit oh writing um, on top yeah like having letters in there which i like a lot yeah Um, Yeah. okay but i don't really feel like that Hmm. obviously that's not in the right in the scene that's kind of an added thing yeah Mm -hmm. yeah there are like little things you do like uh there was that one painting i really liked where there's like the three glowing cubes Mm -hmm. And then there's like uh, th- there's like these like little uh, red like I don't know what that stuff is. It's like an Asian like a like, pattern template. Or yeah, something. that yeah. was a, that was a very like experimental painting mm. for a gr- for a group show. Yeah, which uh, I know is I think you said that in the last podcast that you liked on group shows like to experiment a little bit more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this yeah. was a imaginative imaginative realism group show. Oh, okay. Which I'm not <laughs> okay. that kind of painter at all right, yeah. like i knew there were going to be people painting dragons and stuff <laughs> yeah so i kind of felt like i could step out and be a little bit weird right yeah, for and sure. so that's <laughs> that's what that painting was yeah which was fun yeah yeah i really liked that one it was like uh huh i've never seen him do anything like this before yeah there's a lot of I, that's actually stuff that i used to do more of mm. like before i was showing right more graphic elements and kind of not abstract but no, right. not realism yeah. so much you're just playing around with a yeah. couple but yeah. you could tell there's like a restraint to it you didn't you didn't no, I'm not like a, smushing paint on and just letting it right. go yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah or drawing dragons no dragons <laughs> <laughs> yeah never say never <laughs> uh it'd be funny if you all of a sudden just started just painting just going only like dragons, dragons yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's like, uh, you know, Ron English, I think he said that he got into pop art by trying to paint pop art to make fun of it. And now that's what really? he does. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, that's yeah. <laughs> it's like, huh. That sounds horrible. But I <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, maybe not try uh, that. Uh, yeah. I know. Mm-hmm. Let's try to do the thing I hate the most. And then, oh, I like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. These guys are onto something. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, you you also are like really into like fitness, right? That's mm-hmm. kind of like a big part of your life. It seems yeah, like, and, yeah. 
which is awesome. I mean, uh, and and does that play with uh, with your art? Like, is that do you get anything for like? Do, um, do they connect the two worlds? I think they connect as far as like discipline and mm-hmm. uh, masochism. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> like I th- for me, there's like an element of like. I'm not painting stuff that's mm. in any way easy for me to paint. And I'm usually right. putting myself through like l- some crazy hours. And right. so mm-hmm. I guess the better question is how come Dead you hate lines. yourself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that I feel like that's the same thing with f- f- the fitness okay. side of myself. That's cool. But it's also a, just a management of the painting is so solitary and right. hard and you're in a room and standing there and I'm not doing anything. And so I, if I don't have that out of my system where I can go outside and well, not really outside, but go in a gym right. mm-hmm. and move See around people. a little bit, sweat. Yeah. Yeah. That helps my brain not for sure. turn into a total sociopath maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just recently realized that I've been talking to myself and it's because I've like, I paint and then my job was very solitary, All right. but I'm transitioning into a job where there's people around and I'm working and all of a sudden I realize that there's people around me and I'm talking to myself and I'm like, <laughs> Uh, do I do this? And then I just started noticing it within the last three days. I'm like, I was going crazy. Yeah. (laughs) That's not good. (laughs) Yeah. It's a hard, Uh, I mean, it's a hard thing to be in a studio by yourself for for as much time as it takes to do this. For sure. Yeah. It's a lot of sense. And, and it, I actually hate when people are in the studio with me. It's like, uh, I, 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 I do not, if, if a friend comes over and I'm painting, I will just stop painting. Yeah. I'm mm. not, I'm not the, I have friends that can paint while you're hanging out and like there's people around. I'm like, I don't understand how your brain works. Cause yeah, I, can, I can do that. Man, I can. Yeah. I don't do it very often, <laughs> but I can. I've tried and I always feel like it just ends up messing my painting up. Like, uh, it's just like, I'm not paying, I'm not like you're not super there. focused yeah. to the point where I just end up like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have never, I shouldn't have done that because now I have to go back and redo all the stuff I did right. while people were around. So, mm. do you guys listen? Are you music people? Do you listen to music while you paint? Yeah, music and uh, and podcast and right. yeah. I don't like, even watch like a full on movie, but I don't really watch it. I just kind of have it just in have the it background. On. Mm. Yeah. How about yourself? Uh, books. Oh, okay. Oh, like, yeah. Always oh, like audio books. Yeah. Oh, nice. I love audio books yeah. too. Ever yeah. since I was like a little kid. That's that awesome. was my when they were books on tape. That was my thing. And yeah. so now it's now it's just yeah, audible. I haven't done that in a while, but I really love doing that. Like it's great. And I listen I listen to like the longest possible books. Mm-hmm. Like that's my criteria. Almost only is right. like if it's over forty or fifty hours long and it can last me like right. a week mm-hmm. or a week and a half or two weeks of painting, like that's great. Yeah. And oh, wow. one cohesive mm-hmm. long story. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I can have part of my brain paying attention to that and then the other part is painting and that that's a good way to like be in there for 10 hours and be yeah. okay with mm. it. yeah for sure yeah I, I i remember i'm like a big john steinbeck fan mm-hmm. and uh he um uh, he has a book east of eden yeah and it's just super dense and pretty much impossible to read unless you're some kind of super reader which i'm not uh, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. then i was like oh i could audio book it and i it's super long too, and just really. Yeah, really I've listened to some like slogs. Yeah, like, really. Crime and punishment, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was it's an awesome book. It just I would have never had the chance to if I wasn't an artist because it probably would be hard to listen to if I wasn't painting. Mm-hmm. But the mm-hmm. the painting helps a ton. Yeah, it's cool in that way. Uh, <clears throat> that's cool. That that's crazy that you're you're a musician. Mm-hmm. But you listen to audiobooks while painting. Yeah, I can't listen to music and paint. Huh. I don't um, it's uh it's never worked for me. What's mm-hmm. the music that like that you usually listen to? It's really all over the place. Okay. Mm. Like it's death metal and jazz and <laughs> hip hop and whatever. Right. Yeah, it's like really really uh all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely have to listen to a certain type of music uh while painting. I can't listen to like uh, music, I listen to a lot of rap music, and I just can't do it while painting for the most part because it's just, it's just too energetic, mm-hmm. and I just kind of it throws me off. And I could probably, I mean, I don't listen to metal, but I could definitely, that would definitely be impossible to uh, do while painting. For yeah, me. I listen to metal when I work. 
mm-hmm. like yeah. my other job. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. But and so I, it's not the, uh, it's not the music at all, like the genre that it's just that I think the amount of attention it takes mm-hmm. is either too much or too little mm-hmm. t- for me to be painting at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like it, the books are kind of the perfect balance. Mm. That's cool. I think if I'm if I'm listening to music, I'll tend to stop listening to the music and just start thinking and not really paying attention to the painting either, huh. and end up kind of not paying enough attention to either one of them. Right. And books, I think, kind of keeps me from wandering right. a little bit. Mm. Yeah. My my wife, she gets really mad at me because whenever I listen to audiobooks, I'm like, oh, that was a good read. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do that too. Yeah. Uh, I read this book. <laughs> yeah. 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 And she hates it. She's like, you did not read it. I'm like, I pretty much did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think that's the cool thing with audiobooks is they almost trigger the same part of your brain or something that reading does. Yeah. Uh, it just, I don't know, it, just imagining things that they're talking about and all that good stuff. Yeah. It really, uh, it, it just feels like I'm reading it when I'm not. I It's fine with me. You get yeah. the credit, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I, re- I read so many books mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, with like an asterisk next yeah. to it. Uh, yeah. Read in quotes. Mm. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, What's I'm, a book you've been into recently that you like? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I'm kind of all over the place with books lately as well. I usually go back and forth between like, Fiction, nonfiction. Okay. Uh-huh. Listen to every World War II nonfiction book that oh, there cool. is, and there are <laughs> lots. Oh, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Winston Churchill's autobiography is pretty great, and oh, that's that is cool. a, for anybody who wants a, the longest book ever. <laughs> that is five volumes, and each volume is like thirty hours. Damn. Does the person reading it have like a gobbly voice? <laughs> no, it's a, he's he's better. Uh, he's easier to understand than Churchill. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lately, Did you watch The Darkest Hour? Yeah. No, oh, okay. but I wanted to. Yeah, and I will. <laughs> that's my that's my shit. I like it. Nice. <laughs> um, what's the? I don't even know what Darkest Hour is. It's, it's about Churchill. Yeah. Bi- what's the name? Biopic. Gary Oldman oh. plays Churchill. Right. Yeah. Wasn't there an artist that did the makeup or something like that too? I believe so. Yeah. I know he won an Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. So that's awesome. Probably good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know about lately. Mm. I've been listening to. So I never listen to fantasy ever mm-hmm. into science fiction, listen to whatever. Okay. Fantasy was a genre that I've never had an interest in, mm-hmm. huh. but lately I've been listening because I kind of ran out of really long things to listen to. Right. And so I've been listening to, uh, Lord of the Rings. No, <laughs> no. And I never read that either. Game and of I've Thrones. Had no interest in it. No, it's a, it's, it's like, a, it's like the wind runner series or something. Okay. There are three, it's three books, but and they're huge in mm. that world, and they're oh. they're all really really long, mm. um, and super good. It took me a while to get okay with it mm. right. because there's, it's all just weird names and like silly right. silly things. But I <laughs> and get, dragons. Really, I really like it. Yeah, yeah. There's no dragons in this one, but it's it's. Well, once like, you get into fantasy, dragons will start showing up in your yeah. paintings too. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. That'll be my dragon face. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, uh, mind fantasy stuff at all, but I, it's always like the thing where like, even with game of Thrones, which is such a huge thing, if you're like, Oh, game of Thrones, someone's like, I don't want shit with dragons. You're like, all right, sorry, man. Uh, (laughs) It's like, what did they ever do to you? (laughs) Uh, but I mean, now that we have a a uh, dragon hater on the show. <laughs> we'll go hours and hours into that. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, that's like a, uh, I just went in my brain a little bit. I'm like, first of all, they're dinosaurs, <laughs> not drag. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so I don't know if you want to start, if we want to start breaking down the painting. Um, sure. Yeah. yeah we'll do that. Um, so yeah, we do like, uh, every episode we critique paintings, uh, where we just 
Oh shit! I'm like really, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really harsh. We're like, suck it. Yeah, that'd be a really fun <laughs> podcast. Yeah, thank yeah. you for uh, coming here. It's <laughs> yeah, all exactly. about your painting, right? Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the, these we we pulled up two paintings because we're undecisive about the paintings, and you you're like one of these two works, and we're like, okay, we'll just pick both. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're similar, so that's fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah so the, yeah, they're very uh, pretty similar. They they both are like a painting that's split in half and they have uh one is a, a female figure on the left and the one on the right is uh some of your super intricate cloth work uh because you hate yourself i mm-hmm, believe mm-hmm, that yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh but yeah yeah that's it's a cool idea uh, and pretty ballsy in my to, opinion to split it yeah to yeah. split it because even when I, I remember when i saw the the paintings on instagram i didn't even think that they were the same image i almost thought that you were you know like how people will put yeah like a like, diptych or something uh like mm-hmm. two two panels together as one yeah, yeah 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 and that's what i thought was going on and uh i actually didn't realize that till you sent me and i was like sent me the image and i'm like oh yeah that is one painting that's yeah. crazy uh but yeah the cloth uh and both of them are kind of like twisted almost uh i don't know if that's an aesthetic thing or like a uh, that was aesthetic. Okay. Yeah. Almost everything I do is aesthetic first. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, which is not cool to say as a painter. I know. <laughs> well, we've, we've had a, we, we actually, the last episode we did like a, a talk about um, like having a narrative to a painting. Sure. But the first episode we kind of had the opposite conversation because Sergio was like, yeah, let's just talk about painting something for beauty's sake. Right. Mm-hmm. Which I think is like a valid reason to paint something. Yeah. Uh, I mean, me personally, I just like, I just lean towards the, 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 uh, the narrative ver- way of painting something. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> but I never think that's like a, it's like a mandatory thing to have. It's yeah. Mm-hmm. It's uh, and I feel like most paintings are painted for beauty sake or for aesthetic sake. I yeah. think more paintings than the artists are willing to admit. Probably sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And do you ever catch any flack for that? Um, not directly. Okay. I don't think. Mm. But I would understand. <laughs> I mean, I definitely know that there are people that need to have a reason for the the what's in the painting oh right. for sure yeah. and i know and a lot of the work i like has narration to it mm-hmm. and that's probably one of the reasons i like it is because there's some something's happening and it's easy to tell what that is maybe mm-hmm. or maybe it's not and that's cool too right uh i just haven't i'm just not there yet i might be at some point mm-hmm. like narrative, narrative painting if i as going back to that reference thing if i have if I can get a little bit more involved in the reference photos and come mm-hmm. up with a something. Right. Um, but generally like the meaning behind the paintings are secondary mm-hmm. to the aesthetics and oh, often yeah. come after the painting is done. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Do you come up with the meaning yourself or you let people try to figure it out? for their uh, own sake? I would prefer people try and figure it out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. But I will bullshit about it yeah. when when prompted usually yeah and can't have gotten pretty good at it now I it's not, and it, you know and it to a certain extent there might be some stuff in there that mm-hmm. i'm just not that aware of right so I'm, I'm not saying like there's it's a hundred percent aesthetic and there's no reason for anything right there's, for sure there's moods and and elements and stuff in there that kind of mean something to me yeah but i'm not really that uh aware of it yeah I yeah i mean even like I, a lot of your paintings, the skin tone is very warm, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and I think that just uh, says something about your artwork. And I don't, I like, I, I don't know if that, like, I, I don't know if that's like a obvious, like, um, decision. Mm-hmm. But I just, whenever I see stuff like that, where I'm like, oh, I don't know if like there's a, if it's like narrative heavy, I just go like, oh, well, he obviously likes to paint skin in warm tone. Even if he doesn't decide it, I think like he's, he's someone who is like drawn to doing that. You know, mm-hmm. you're, you're, yeah. uh, you're just drawn to the colors you choose. Uh, even these, they're like a more colder tone, but, uh, you know, you see paintings where the skin tone is like really just blues and right uh, and and it still looks natural but it's just kind of how they paint but i could see that in your art and 
uh, you know, we had John Wentz on here who's transitioned to narr- like no narrative or less narrative to his paintings, mm-hmm. which <clears throat> I think people, you know, really gravitate towards. And it's, it's, uh, I don't know. Uh, Sergio mentioned it before. He was like, yeah, the problem with narrative paintings is you can then like go back to it and be like, man, that's tacky as fuck or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And then it, it also can sometimes be taught like t- topical and could lock your painting into a time period. Right. And, like mm-hmm. I'm not, I, I like that stuff in paintings myself, but I don't want to put in right. something that really ties it into like, I'm not going to put an iPhone in a painting. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause right. I, I'm not trying to make any commentary about, Right. Or some Pop political thing. Yeah. Right. But there are people that like Alex Gross who can do that and it works really well. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just not what, what I do. Right. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, and I don't think there's a positive or negative to that. And if, no. you, and if you're out there and you're saying that's negative, you can come see us <laughs> <laughs> uh, and stop giving people dirty looks from afar or something. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's cool. Um, but yeah, so the paintings, so we have two paintings. Uh, um, one, uh, it's, a is a lady kind of, uh, it's her is a nude and she's has her, her back towards us and, uh, looking over her shoulder. And then the right one is like a lady who she has this like almost blank, tired, uh, almost, I don't, know, I don't know if this is mean, but it's like, <laughs> it's like she, she almost seems like th- the brink of being defeated. Okay. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, yeah, she has like her head tilted back. Um, but yeah. The, and then the, see the thing with the cloth I was wondering about was like, I don't know, maybe, maybe, um this is nowhere near correct, but I was like, I wonder if it has anything to do with a female figure, specifically genital parts as like on the left one. I was right. like, yeah. Uh, I thought that that might happen yeah, <laughs> when yeah. I was painting them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's definitely not where I was going with it. <laughs> right. The, the, the idea behind it was more that once I was, once I got into painting fabric, that was really, really interesting to me, mm-hmm. like getting it all twisted up and then putting two different light sources on it. Uh-huh. It started to do what a portrait does for me. Like mm-hmm. as far as like aesthetically, okay. I started to feel like it had a little bit of a personality and it was as fun for me to paint and as gratifying to paint it well when I, when it did paint uh-huh. it well. So I, so it, in a in a sense, I kind of feel like these are dual portraits. Right, that's cool. Uh, like you're paying both respect. Yeah, uh, and, and I just they they do a similar thing. They're yeah. they're under the same light, which may not be as apparent because one of them is flat, obviously. Right. Right. But um, it's cool too because if you put the cloth, like say if you the model is uh, has the cloth around her, then the model is the the main piece and then the cloth kind of is it's like a secondary a, thing. Yeah. yeah. But by doing it this way, like the cloth is like its own, it gets its own respect. Yeah. I wanted to <laughs> sp- split the focus and see if that worked. So usually, I mean, usually, you know, you're supposed to have like a focal point of the painting. Right. Mm-hmm. Somebody, somebody told me that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think it's in the is, Bible. This is very much <laughs> not that. So there's two, there's two clear kind of focal points for uh-huh. me anyway. Um, Nice. And uh, so I did the one on the, uh, so the one that we're looking at on the right is, um, uh, signal to noise is the name of the series. I did three of them mm-hmm. that are split paintings. Okay. And the one on the right that we're looking at is number one. And then one on the left is number two. So I did the one on the right first okay. signal to noise one. And I liked it so much that I did it a bunch more times. Well, that's cool. Um, I mean, one of what one time did not work at all. <laughs> Hmm. That is that I modified. Someone's in the trash can right now. Now I cut I cut the painting in half. Oh, oh yeah, wow. that's yeah. cool. So this is on canvas or wood? Uh, they're on dye bond. Everything. Oh, okay. On dye okay. Bond. Nice. Yeah. Um, so I did one for this last show. Uh, that was the same vibe, pattern on one side, figure on the other side. Um, but it was mm-hmm. really dark, dark background, and the pattern or the the fabric didn't have two light sources it didn't have a, enough lighting information i painted right. it twice um and it 
did not work. Hmm. That's uh, tough. So I cut the fabric off. I cut the painting in half and just kept the figure part. And then the figure part was good enough by On itself. itself. Yeah. Hmm. Thankfully. <laughs> cool. Uh, I wonder if, um, <laughs> I was just thinking that because there's two focal points of the painting, if you, you ever have the, like, you know, you could do the trick where you the, like the magic eye yeah. paintings oh. <laughs> or, or no. like there's a, there's a rocket ship in there. If you like <laughs> cross your eyes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I was thinking the opposite of cross-eyed where you like, can like make one eye go like, uh, look like you have a lazy eye or something right. like that. Oh, right. Yeah. Then you can ver you can experience the painting, how it's supposed to be experienced with <laughs> one center focus. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Not bad joke. Sorry guys. Sorry, all you listeners out there. <laughs> I'm uh, subscribing by the thousands. <laughs> uh, uh, have you ever painted a mannequin before? No. I'd be curious what if it would do anything for you. Because the way you say, seems like you're talking about the these paintings, where it's a lot of it is what it seems like it, that does it for you as far as painting. It's like just the the description of the form and the way you've kind of talked about it here, where it's almost like painting the model and painting the fabric it's so similar like how much of of like a human's life goes into your what you like about the pain uh the process of painting yourself like how much how much uh of it is like because it's a person you're actually painting uh versus these fabrics these inanimate objects so mm -hmm. i'm curious like if you may if you painted something that looks like a person but is a has no life to it what it would do for you yeah i don't know you mean you're talking about like an act like painting an actual mannequin yeah like if you set up a mannequin like a still life or right. something what would it do for you that's a great question <laughs> i don't know i've done still lives once maybe like yeah. it's just not a i just haven't done it much yeah um yeah i don't really like painting still lifes either for whatever reason it's on my list <laughs> of things to try and mm -hmm. do like i'm interested to see what it would be like mm -hmm. the yeah. same with plain air like i have not done that either yeah uh, <laughs> And I'd like to. Yeah. Um, I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to. Like, I really, I really like it. Yeah. Um, I don't like being outside very much. So I don't, I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, <laughs> but, a lot of sunscreen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yes. That's, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. And then uh, I was also wondering, like, maybe you can set up like a, like a dragon. <laughs> right. And, uh, right and what that would do for you right. <laughs> do maybe like a tattoo dragon or something <laughs> on the figure i can maybe get get there in my brain <laughs> no you would never no. <laughs> just like all this tattoo and like a lady's arm but there's just like one part that's it's like negative space of a, a dragon shape and you're just like right. couldn't do it <laughs> uh just couldn't do it <laughs> But you've done a series of, of painting people with tattoos before, haven't you? I did uh, just two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that was for another group show, mm -hmm. trying to kind of experiment a little bit. And those nice. weren't, those tattoos weren't on the figures. Oh, okay. So I added them. And they're Masami Taroka paintings. So oh, right. Very yeah. specific. And the and if you look at the, the way the tattoos are laid on the body, like it wouldn't work. Because <laughs> they're, they're, they only work in one one from one angle really all oh, right <laughs> uh, but it was just a kind of an experiment i really like the way they came out but the, i've never been one with painting tattoos f like most of the models i paint have tattoos right. oh, really? um yeah probably at mm. least 60 percent, let's say mm -hmm. um but it 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 dates the painting a little bit it adds kind of a modern touch mm -hmm. right. can really change the vibe depending on what the tattoo is. Right. Um, and then I also feel like I'm painting somebody else's work a little bit. Uh -huh. Right. Um, yeah. And not only that, but you have to hope that the tattoo isn't like really bad. Which is rare. Right. Yeah. And then also there's like Barber, Sean Barber, who's a friend mm -hmm. of mine. Mm -hmm. He's that That's kind of his thing. Mm -hmm. right. And it has been for a while. And I kind of like letting him have it. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want it. He does a great job at it. And I don't really want yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And he's, he used to be a tattoo artist. He's as still well, a tattooer. Right? Yeah. Oh, he still yeah. tattoos. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, I didn't yeah, know yeah. that. He was a, he was a painter first. And he's he hasn't been tattooing nearly as long as he's been painting. Oh, really? Um, hmm. Yeah. That's cool. 
Yeah, but he's, uh, I mean, he's really like steeped in the tattoo culture mm-hmm. and like the history of it. And he's paints a lot of tattooers. And right. I really mm-hmm. like tattoos as an art form and I'm mm-hmm. in the community a little mm-hmm. bit. Right. Um, see your sleeves from here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I appreciate it tattoos. a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just have no idea of the lingo. Yeah. yeah. I can see his sleeves too. <laughs> also, the tattoo's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, the, uh, yeah, they're, they're, the 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 tattoo culture is very like, uh, you know, there is a, it's like having like full sleeves. Of the, I, what was one of a? I was talking to a guy and he called it, I don't know, something ridiculous like the Sacramento something. But it was like if you get like your neck tattooed and your arms tattooed, but your stomach and chest oh, is just right. like. Uh, no tattoos it's just right. like i just want people to know yeah yeah tattoos, but I, don't know, I don't know what that's that's a that's a modern that's a very like current thing that's happening that, that wasn't like where people have tattoos in just the visible areas right. yeah whereas hmm. 20 years ago when i first started getting tattoos it was the opposite right, right. everybody would get tattooed anywhere that you could could cover up right and now you go in LA and like everybody has face tattoos. Right. Face tattoos. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy, crazy to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and that that and the like uh, tattoo culture seems like I, I am know where they'll say like someone will, like oh I want a face tattoo and I'm like fuck no man like you don't even have like any body tattoos right like, you, and I feel like most legit shops would probably be that way yeah and I think that's good yeah Yeah. Yeah. it was kind of a standard of like well i think you yeah you have to maybe earn it a little bit and like Mm. there's also every every person with tattoos has some tattoos that they maybe would not get now right i mean not that they regret it but like right when i first started getting tattooed i was getting my legs tattooed and i'm Mm -hmm. really really glad (laughs) that those are on my legs not on my hands or my neck right like that would be a real drag for Mm -hmm. sure Yeah. yeah Yeah, so uh, do you have any uh, any plans for a face tattoo? I have no plans for a face tattoo. <laughs> no, I'm going to keep it, all, everything covered, or cut, be able to be covered. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, I'm mostly to bodysuit. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So you just, that's cool. So if you wear a suit, you, you look good. Won't, uh, won't be able to see. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's yeah. like James Bond. Well, nothing like James Bond. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just like James Bond. <laughs> the fact that you're wearing a suit. Right. That is like James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> the tattoos have no... Right. Right. <laughs> I'll be just like James Bond. Uh, let's, let's end it there. Yeah. I was so confused. Right there. <laughs> uh, nice. Um, so we also like to do a current event thing. Should we do that now? Uh, I'm sure. Uh yeah, let's pull this up. We try to do like a current event based on art shit going okay. on. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sergio Ken takes the lead on this because. Yeah, I don't know if you heard about this, about uh, this new bill that they just passed a little while ago, or this week actually came out about uh, they signed a, a law into effect that basically takes away um, these portraits being paid for by taxpayer money basically okay and uh so i guess the idea is that um there's a guy uh louisiana senator it's been kind of his little pet project for a while uh about this uh eliminating government funded oil painting act which is it really doesn't have to do with oil painting um specifically they just needed the nice little acronym for it (laughs) but it's basically they were saying that uh you know, it's that same thing people talk about all the time where it's like, oh, we're, there's so much wasteful spending in the government. So um, let's if people want their portraits painted, let them pay for it themselves, which, you know, I, I kind of get. It's like these people who are in the government, they probably can't afford to do that. But without this, without the taxpayer paying for it, will they now? It's probably not likely. Right. And so um, for me, it's like, you know, there's so many other things that people waste money on in the government where, you know, like in the thing it was talking about how um, Ben Carson is spent like $30,000 on a dinner set for his office. Sweet. <laughs> so, yeah. So like the, the average portrait, I guess they're saying costs anywhere between like 20 to $40,000, which is like pretty sweet gig for the 
portrait painter. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But um, that's that's not crazy, right? No, no. For you know, that's a pretty <laughs> prestigious, right? Painting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll, yeah. Be, that'll be a part of American history. Yeah, mostly. I would imagine Kahinde <laughs> Wiley got paid more than. <laughs> Oh, for sure. To yeah. Do Obama. Yeah. 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 And I'm pretty sure the Obama's paid for it out of their own money too. Right. Yeah. So for me, it's kind of more of a thing where it's like, you know, art always seems to be the first on the chopping block as far as funding goes. Like in schools, it's the first uh, thing that gets axed from the budgets. And it's just another one of those things where it's like people just keep in society, um, just devaluing art right and it's not so much that i care so much for the portraits themselves um some of them some of them are better than others it's not even like a commentary about the aesthetics of the paintings themselves it's more just Ooh, like shots the, fired the attitude behind like uh the kind of there's a bit of a reason to have portraits made of of government officials even it's just for posterity but just the idea that like art's important enough and portraits are important enough for people to keep it going and it's worth paying for even i guess involuntarily through our taxes but um even though you know most of these portraits end up just in somebody's office locked away but instead if they made that money go toward publicly funded art things like pay for more paintings to go in museums or whatever right um it seems to me like instead of just getting rid of of art paying for art just make the money go somewhere else uh that's still um that's still you know beneficial to the culture at large right hmm. so i don't know what what you guys think about this whole thing I don't know. I mean, you know, the, this is like the least bad thing that this f fucking shithole <laughs> government has been doing lately. That's true. So like, yeah. uh, it's it's hard to be. Yeah, in my head, I'm kind of thinking like, well, maybe what will happen is like, no one will paint Trump, and then maybe like a new, <laughs> I mean, new group will the, come the in. The problem is, is that the money is going to go to something way way worse. Right. Right. Yeah. Way worse. And and I and I I think that I think. You know the portraits are super neat, like especially as just f historic, like it's tradition, mm -hmm. right? which is a cool reason to do some things. Yeah, right. It's sure. also not a good enough reason to do. I mean, there's a lot of dumb things that we do because they're tradition. Right. right. Um, <laughs> yeah. But the, it's just the. But I mean, they're cutting arts funding everywhere. Right. And they're going to put money towards some kind of, you know it's just they're right. all the wrong thing every everything yeah. is bad right now like right. there's nothing good happening in the, <laughs> in the with this administration so the i mean it's uh, it's hard to like even get a little bit sad about this yeah. right because, because of just everything else yeah my thoughts are that maybe crump won't be painted and then the next administration will re will decide to bring it back then we'll just have a gap in the timeline somebody will i mean <laughs> and i think i mean the it's, i'm sure these politicians when the when the by the time they get to this level or like when they're retired like they can afford a portrait they yeah, probably sure. have private portraits already yeah, yeah. i imagine they some, do and, and if not there'll probably be some committee that maybe people could get the funding to do them <laughs> right anyway right yeah. so yeah. like i'm not i'm not mad that the public funds won't go to to those portraits yeah neither am i but but i you know again the money that <laughs> isn't you know the 20 or 40 grand a year that's not going to go to this is going to go to some other just monstrosity that yeah you know. yeah absolutely yeah they just throw money at like military stuff left and right like the amount of money oh, that God, goes yeah. into the military you're like i can't even comprehend <laughs> and but they... like the forty thousand dollars is like well i mean mm -hmm. the guy that the what's the epa guy mm -hmm. who's, who's oh, in yeah. trouble for just taking pl private flights all over the place right yeah whatever that guy was yeah. i can't remember what he does yeah I think he's they, in the news again today they referenced spending. it in the in yeah. the article yeah it's like four hundred thousand dollars or something like yeah, that like just on private, private jets, jets to, to, and his to, it's like an hour commute yeah 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 there's a lot of so it's things like that or so kind i mean of they, you know annoying. that that's it's nice to say that they're trying to save money but they're not right, right. so I mean, that's where the, I think that's where the problem lies. Is right. that yeah. They don't exactly This is, is like a drop in the bucket. Like they don't. Yeah, yeah this, exactly. Like, makes no difference to like the amount of money that they're paying. And they've stripped all the, like the EPA and the national parks and all right. this stuff of right. money. 
Exactly. Yeah, that's that's kind of the sad part. Is like it's it's a tiny drop in the bucket when it comes to the money, but it's the fact that you're just going out of your way to attacking certain things that just don't well, seem like Well, he's going out of his important. way to attack anything that <laughs> Obama was into. Right. It seems. Yeah, yeah that's or true. Or anything too. that the Fox Fox news people say is bad right yeah Yeah, it's like is art that like is it taking like the attack on art is like just seems unnecessary to waste your time with shit like this like yeah it just seemed to me like an easy target something more important than a couple of paintings that i i I have zero confidence these guys are going to do anything (laughs) remotely rad Yeah. yeah but i do like think that this has been there it's so bad now that it kind of has to swing the other way. Yeah, hopefully. I think so. Like I think, and people are so involved. Now. People are a little complacent after Obama, and like, mm-hmm. right. The, everybody thought it was going to be easy. Yeah, like mm-hmm. with the last election. So I, so I hope I think people are a little more aware. I think so. It'll, it'll, hopefully come back around. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope and think so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Trying, trying to remain positive. I, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And I just hope we don't die before that happens. Right. <laughs> it's like the big hope is like, I hope nothing crazy happens. Like, I just hope my big wish now is like, I hope we don't start another war. That's like my big, like finger cross. Like, that's what I don't want. That's the right. one thing. Please mm-hmm. let's just not start another war. And I'll, and I'll consider this guy being in the power. <laughs> he is a success in that way. It's like, <laughs> oh, at least we right. didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Like, thank God. But I I don't even know if that's a thing yet. So yeah. <laughs> oh, hopefully we'll know in four years or three years now. Yeah. So fingers crossed. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but on yeah. the subject of portraits, do you ever do any commission portraits or anything I do. like that? Yeah. Oh, do you? Yeah, I don't do them often, but I do do them a c- couple of year maybe. You said okay. Do-do. Yeah, I do do them. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to do more. I enjoy it a lot. Oh, do you? Yeah, <laughs> and I like. Um, I really like portraiture. I'm just painting portraits. They tend not to do very well mm-hmm. selling wise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I don't do them as much as I would like to do them probably. For sure. Yeah. You mean like do them like to exhibit in a gallery yeah. space? Okay. Yeah. yeah. For me, like it's my, f- like as a collector, which uh-huh. is like a I'm big air quotes on that. <laughs> I, I really like portraiture and I would yeah. happily buy portraits of people that I do not know who they are yeah, because, same here. because of the painting. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I know most people aren't like that mm-hmm. yeah. and need to have some kind of relationship with the, the sitter, the subject. Right. Yeah. Um, which is, I think why it's a little bit hard mm-hmm. to, to sell them. Yeah, um, it is. <laughs> but I do like them a lot and we'll continue doing them. I have nice. like, I have, I just did one for this sh- next show that I'm in and then I have, a, I think two commissions after that. Oh, cool. Which will be fun. Hmm. Yeah. So the, they're doing they're commissioning you to do it, but um, they're letting you exhibit it in the. No, show, this is, they're separate. Oh, okay. Do, I did a portrait of a model just for me. Oh, okay. That'll be in the show. Oh, okay. And nice. Then, I mean, I still do them, even though they they sometimes don't sell. Yeah. Often yeah. don't sell. Yeah. 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 I just did a portrait, and I'm like, uh, hopefully someone will buy this. Thing. Yeah, but they're one. <laughs> I, I like them more, and I'm not mad that they're around the house if they come back. Right. You know, and <laughs> they tend to be more affordable because they're smaller. Mm-hmm. So that at least helps. Yeah. You know, at least there's that. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shoulder up paintings are so fun. Yeah. It's nice. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. I'm painting so slow these days mm-hmm. that doing a finishing most of a painting in a week is really like satisfying. Right. <laughs> yeah, for um, sure. As opposed to the one or two months that it's been taken for the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. When you do a commission, do you approach it the same way as when you do a um, when you do a personal work, like as far as like reference gathering, shooting up the or setting up the models to yeah. shoot and everything? Yeah, yeah. Usually, when I shoot a model, I'll be directing the model for the whole shoot, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then at the end of the shoot, I'll say, "This is the portrait part. Do what your do what your thing is now don't listen to me and pose okay <laughs> how you feel most comfortable posing mm-hmm. and it tends to be that the models that i pick that isn't that different than what i was looking for okay. so i definitely have a <laughs> have a thing um but when i do commissions that i'm trying to capture them mm-hmm. not necessarily what i want to see okay so right. but you know i'm the one going through the reference 
you know, so I'll send them the ones that I like the best, which mm-hmm. will for sure have that quality, I guess. So yeah. Really <laughs> cool. I, I, there's this photographer from back in the day. I don't remember his name was, but he's that people jump. You, you ever hear about that guy? He would have like uh, celebrities and presidents jump. Okay. And so you have all these, um, and then he would photograph them while they were in mid jump or whatever. Sweet. And, and hmm. you would see like their personality come out. I think like Marilyn Monroe, Monroe was like very like I think over I've the seen top. Some of those. And yeah, then Richard Nixon is like stiff and just like <laughs> yeah, yeah, Oof. yeah. And, that's, like, a, that's a super good idea. Yeah, and to I get, always to get around people's like facade. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I always wonder like what would the, how would I kind of do that to pull out what the, who the person is without? And usually that ends up being me like during the photo shoot if we kind of like start chit chatting or something and someone laughs, I'm like click, click, trying right. To, like, yeah, but that photo never comes out that great. But for yeah. me, it's after a, after a shoot, mm-hmm. like probably at some point the model is naked. Mm-hmm. Th- there, there's a rapport by the time we get to the end. Right. Mm-hmm. Usually, they're pretty comfortable, and it's it's easier to get their personality. Then mm-hmm. it's not, especially if it's the first time we've worked together. It's not so right. hesitant and model right. you know? yeah, And I've been sure. shooting mostly professional models, so they're very mm-hmm. good at. Um, posing yeah so it takes a little bit sometimes to kind of get them out of that right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that's that's definitely another challenge <laughs> is uh the because i think sometimes the poses look great as photographs but as like an artist i'm like that's not what i'm going for yeah <laughs> and you don't like i'm not i don't want to the most of the models are doing fashion things right so, right and yeah. i'm not i don't want to be in that world right, right. necessarily mm-hmm. um so the like the there are a lot of models will come in and start doing the the poses that they normally would do because mm-hmm. they do this all day. Right. <laughs> and so I'll have to keep telling them like, nope, just stand there. <laughs> like at least turn all that off. <laughs> and usually, you know, 90% of the time they can get there and yeah. just stand there and look weird and sometimes uncomfortable. And like that uh-huh. works really mm-hmm. well for me. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had some good luck too with people that weren't models because they don't, come in like with the the ideas of what what looks good as a photograph yeah. and yeah. i'm like oh can you do something like this and i'm like all right cool thank you yeah <laughs> uh but then there's the other hurdles that come with that as well it's yeah. like can you do this and they're like eh, and you're like never mind <laughs> yeah exactly. yeah it's hard but i mean just yeah. like with anything else like the people that are pros at it mm-hmm. it, it yeah. makes it makes it easier for me because i'm not a photographer really right. yeah so sure. if i have if I take 600 pictures, I may get 30 good ones with mm-hmm. a professional model. Mm-hmm. Whereas with somebody else, I might get two, right. which is still fine. <laughs> still good. Uh-huh. I only need one usually. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. But when you do a shoot, do you, are you just looking for one perfect picture more or less? No, mm-hmm. I'm looking for as many as I can get in. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I've been trying, I try and change it, change the, scenario a little bit so maybe i can get a couple paintings out of one shoot right yeah Yeah. um it's rare that that happens but Mm -hmm. i think also the fact that like if you shoot in uh, like a nude model like uh because sometimes i'll shoot and it'll i'll have clothes on them but the problem is is like all right well do i paint this shirt or dress 10 times now (laughs) like right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, you gotta vary it up a little bit if it's a really like distinct right piece of clothing yeah. like you'll end up with a painting that has a really s- similar mm-hmm. yeah so i'll have models bring in stuff usually right and it's almost always just up to them what they bring which yeah is fun. right yeah, and and if they're nude then there's no confusion of if they wore the same thing right so you kind of get you get to pull out more at least for me personally i get to paint more reference or more paintings from a nude shoot than from a yeah, clothes. and that's mm-hmm. why I Same painted here. so few clothes mm-hmm. up until recently. Yeah, yeah. it's just way mm-hmm. more mileage out of, I, and I it's like seemed kind of unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Do you like painting clothes? I I do now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It has to be re- it's real specific stuff though. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, and I don't even know what to tell you is th- what that is. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, some, you, pr- you I mean, you definitely seem like you don't like things that date your painting. So I'm assuming you that's true. You don't want like a. Bernie 2016. <laughs> no, I don't. No, <laughs> that'd be cool. <laughs> but no, I don't really. The, I, I painted a, a model with like a jacket that had studs and stuff all over it. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, which I is remember. Pretty, pretty clearly like contemporary. Mm-hmm. Right. But I, and I really liked it. Mm. So it happens. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but it has to, it has to be, yeah, like it has to be like not too period specific, but also not distracting, but also interesting right. enough to warrant being in the painting. Right. Um, so it's, huh. it's hard. It's always been really challenging for me, which is why these uh, or the, the split portrait right. fabric mm-hmm. ones kind of worked out so yeah. well as I right. got to do both. Right. And I wasn't super concerned with, I have a hard time with backgrounds. You, often. Even the one, the first one that was like a lacy shirt, right? Yeah. Lacy shirt. Yeah. Yeah. And, and th- that's kind of like another thing that's pretty timeless, I would say, or. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, if she's wearing like a spaghetti strap top thing, yeah. it's, it's kind of doesn't, it, does it's not distracting for right. me as the viewer and it yeah. doesn't necessarily like date it there's no logos or anything or, right. or mm-hmm. some kind of really contemporary thing on there yeah um oh, that's cool i mean it's it's i uh, the more i like i'm uh like as of like maybe the last two years i've been kind of almost trying to do the opposite i'm like what what how can i talk about like this time period or that time period based off of um you know right but you're a narrative guy that kind of makes sense yeah 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 i mean wait for my dragons (laughs) 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 yeah i mean masami taroka who's a friend of mine that and one of my favorite painters Uh he's a narrative guy Mm -hmm. and there's like so much happening and there's and they're they're very tied to a time period Mm -hmm. in a good way so the stuff he did in the 80s is dealing with 80s stuff right and Mm -hmm. i like it's still they're still great paintings. Mm-hmm. Like they don't lose any power to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I just haven't, I'm just not comfortable yet there. Yeah, yeah. I may, may totally change everything mm-hmm. at some point. Yeah, well, we're, we're trying right to, to change s- my entire <laughs> everything. And we're <laughs> trying to slowly push you towards dragons. <laughs> Sweet. It's like, yeah, yeah. it was like a yeah. mentalist trick. We did this in five years. <laughs> we'll say it all started here. You yeah. Mannequins and dragons. Yeah. And- yeah. <laughs> Have you guys seen that show on Netflix called the push? No, oh, they're trying to convince some guy to push a guy off the roof. Oh, and it's like, uh, so I don't know if it's real or not. It might be fake, but um, yeah, they, they set up a scenario where they push, where they set it up to the point where they have a guy sitting on the roof and they're all trying to convince this. There's like, I don't know, like 300 actors or something in this fake scenario, but the guy doesn't know it's fake. Okay. And it's in England, so I don't think they'll get sued, but... But it's crazy because if it's real, they did it to five people or something like that, and four of them pushed the person off the roof. Is it? Does it have to do with the the study about the morals? That yeah, the real famous yeah. moral study, where like, would you push one guy to save? No, no, five other people. Or is it like is it that oh. thing? No, it's it's not. Yeah, it's not that. It's it's kind of like um, it, it's based off of like uh, how you can be convinced to do something that you think you wouldn't do. Yeah. Um, oh, so it's more cool. like that one study where you push the button to shock someone. Yeah. Kind of like that. Mm. So the, they open up with like, just to kind of give you an idea of where the show is going to go, the, where they call up a cafeteria or a cafe and they, the guy picks up and they're like, Oh, is there a lady there with a baby wearing this? And the lady's an actress and the guy's like, yeah. And they're like, oh, she's, this is the, we're the law enforcement. She's a well-known uh, child kidnapper. Can you please grab the baby stroller and walk it out of the restaurant? Hmm. Um, and they do it in the, this really convincing way where the guy does it. And then you're like, what the, <laughs> and they're just trying so to show just, you like, just like scamming people. <laughs> yeah. They're just trying to show you like you, you just kidnap someone. Yeah, based off of like the idea that you were doing the right thing. Right. You know, it's kind of like, I think it's like a, trying to explain how people, you know, like uh, in World War II, obviously <clears throat> Germany was like this horrific place and people were doing horrible things and they would justify it in their mind as the right thing to do. And it's kind of like them trying to show you how easy it is to convince someone of doing bad. Mm-hmm. Um but I, I don't know why we brought this up. It had to do with, God, I don't know. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that the fact that we're pushing you towards dragging. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, and I think it's working. So. <laughs> uh, well, one of the things that's happened to me from doing these episodes and listening to everybody else talk about all the meaning they put behind their work makes me more um, mindful of what 
what the potential is in in the narratives that you can put into the, the paintings you do so it does kind of have a little bit of a indirect effect on me too because i start out when we first <laughs> yeah thanks <laughs> uh, yeah when i first start out like the our first episode was talking about the painting that i did was uh like about beauty for beauty's sake mm -hmm. and like the the last episode we did together just josh and i was about me starting to add more meaning into the work be beyond just the beauty part of it right i think you can have both i don't think yeah. it's a yeah yeah i'm i just haven't figured out how to do both mm -hmm. or i don't know if i have i would like to do narrative paintings that were really subtle mm -hmm. like, i don't particularly like narrative paintings that kind of hit you over the head with the narration. yeah me either like, i'd like to have to figure it out a mm -hmm. little bit uh -huh. or have it not be as apparent yeah first view Right. Well, um, that's something I like about uh, a series you did where um, it was back in the day where you were doing the, the uh, I think it was part of, or partly around the time where you were doing the gold and, and black um, dipped skin. And you added um, uh, like, uh, I think it was Latin writing mm -hmm. behind everything. Mm -hmm. And it almost seemed like you were doing uh, this like pseudo religious uh, iconography behind it. But you were also like admittedly atheist. Yeah. So it was yeah, yeah. this interesting interplay between uh like the just the the interesting visual elements of this iconography of a of a culture that's kind of developed over a couple thousand years, yet like it doesn't have to be a thing that has anything to do with the religion itself. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still super interested in that. I'd like to get back to it. For sure. And nice. Also, how dare you just say iconography like it's a commonly used word? Iconography. What, do people <laughs> not know what that means? <laughs> I just have no idea. What is that do something to do to with iconic it? imagery? It's a religious icons. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I figured so it out. But things, I, that, <laughs> things that represent a, like the crucifix. Is <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I figured it was, had something to do with icon, but <laughs> yeah, I really like all that old religious art. That's like what kind of got me into painting. Oh, really? Um, yeah, the b really big ones that have a lot of like, like Renaissance era type stuff, or yeah, and like or even before that, just um, like a lot of Henri and Caravaggio and all that stuff. Where sure, like okay. there's religious, there. I mean, most of those old guys are painting. F very religious things mm -hmm. right, because they sure. are very religious I mean, right the church is paying for the artwork like yeah, yeah. but w i mean one of the reasons i find that amusing is that they're always super dark and all yeah. about suffering and there's blood <laughs> yeah. and people are being beheaded and it's crazy yeah uh and i always found that amusing like i like i think the imagery is really powerful and there's a lot of depth to the paintings and they're you know, supposedly about this like peaceful love everybody religion, but they're super dark and, and brutal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I like that. And I would like, I would like my paintings to have that same right. I think pre the presence. Like that would be the goal, mm. but it's, it's, it's one of those things where I'd like my older stuff, I think is a little bit too overt. Like I'd like mm. to be a little more subtle with that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, And I just haven't found that the like, the way to go then the next direction for that mm. yeah yeah i think i keep wondering about like the subtlety in art mm -hmm. uh because i feel like i'm kind of obsessed with it but then i think like it like you know you see some artwork that's not subtle at all and it's very successful and you wonder like maybe it's just because we are so prone to um seeing art and being like oh that's just like beating you over the head but to someone mm -hmm. else it's like you know they just they're like they like the normal person like it's easy know. easier to digest mm -hmm. yeah to for them yeah. maybe mm -hmm. yeah and i keep wondering about that and like if it's if it's worth trying to i mean i think i think it. trying to trying to determine what's sellable is a losing battle always yeah, mm -hmm. yeah i mean i don't mean sellable i mean it's just, almost, even what's like what people like yeah like not necessarily even just for sales but as far mm -hmm. as like right. mass acceptance of something yeah, yeah like i think it's it's so hard because it's it's tied to so much other stuff right like trends and whatever you mm -hmm. know and and that stuff changes mm -hmm. 
Yeah, for sure. And there's all kinds of, I mean, this is true with any kind of subjective artistic, you know, I could name a thousand bands that Mm -hmm. are amazing that nobody gives a shit about and they broke up. Right. (laughs) And a thousand bands that are garbage and they're all millionaires. You know what I mean? Yeah. Same goes for art. Like I can think of tons sure. of artists that right. I, th- I th- really don't understand at all that <laughs> right. do very well. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Damien Hurst. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Uh, so right. that I think that, but in thankfully sometimes some things align and there's a great band who does mm-hmm. well. And right. that's really nice. And yeah. there's a great artist who does well. I'm like, yeah, oh, I think that's, I think that's the tricky part is when you see like the great band who's successful, you're like, and that's the, or the, that kind of realm of like someone that didn't lose their integrity, but is so successful. And you're like, so what is it that they did? Maybe it is. Just, uh, I mean, I think it's much. a lot of it is just circumstance. Yeah. There's some luck sure. in there. There's things that are just lining up in the right way. Yeah. That makes their sense. Intentions are decent, you mm-hmm. know? And I think that's the goal. But I think as artists, we have zero reason to expect that that's going to happen yeah, or that sure. we can like somehow figure it out. Let's figure out the like recipe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I think maybe we'll be 50 and be like, Oh, look at this. <laughs> like I'm still doing it and I'm right. successful <laughs> now. And I, you know, right. all you have to okay. do is rob banks yeah. and paint dragons. But I would also be not surprised at all if I still had three jobs right. forever. Yeah. You know, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel. Yeah. I'm like hoping for the you know the paint only but <laughs> not like uh and i'm also like planning toward like i'm trying to make economic steps to get there you know right like, right yeah uh but it's all like a it's all kind of for me it's just to even like be able to pursue art for a couple of years and see if i can do it is the goal as of right now without mm-hmm. without a second job but <clears throat> But uh, everything I do is kind of to go towards that route. Yeah. You guys both have jobs, right? Yeah. Uh, well, right now I'm working part time uh, at my friend's frame shop. But I haven't before that I hadn't had any sort of job in like seven or eight years. Yeah. He's yeah. got super soft hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> do, you, do you have you taught Oh, here and there? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, I mean, the main reason I get to do that is because I still live with my parents. So. <laughs> <laughs> there's the, there's the yeah. secret. Yeah. But that won't last forever. So I mean, a lot a lot of the artists I know that make a living being artists supplement with some kind of teaching or workshops. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, or they have like a, you know, a spouse that makes makes the bacon. And or that. They, right. Yeah. And they get to kind of be the at home parent who paints, which is perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. I mean. Yeah. that'd be. I don't actually know that many. I, actually, I probably do. I just don't know the situation. Right. Hmm. My, my wife, she just loves to ask everyone that's a full time artist that we know. She's like, "How do you do it?" Yeah, and there a lot of times they're like, "Oh, my wife, like she or her husband, they <laughs> yeah. they make a lot of money. They have this great job, and <laughs> I just take care of the kids and paint." I'm like, right. "That's cool. I yeah, mean, that is cool. Yeah, that's I I sadly <laughs> did not marry a millionaire, <laughs> uh, but." Uh, do you do any teaching at all no i haven't i I kind of i'd like to at some point okay i I teach at i train people at gyms okay which is (laughs) another accidental career move (laughs) yeah Um, right so i'm comfortable like with that but i i've also not been in any kind of instructional art environment ever i'm super intimidated by it so Mm -hmm. i've never taken workshops or atelier's Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. school or anything me neither so the the idea of teaching somebody seems stupid. <laughs> like I wouldn't, I just would not how to structure it and like right. how, what the best, but then and I, I, and I, and I know that I would figure all this stuff out and it's not outside the realm of like mm-hmm. possibility. And, and maybe the fact that I didn't go through those systems might be beneficial to right. people. Yeah. yeah I think sure. it would be in, um, in a way I would like to at some point. I just haven't got there yet. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't even know how you how you begin to go that route. I've had people ask a lot about mm-hmm. workshops. I bet they would. Have. So yeah. I, f- I feel like I could do it at least once or twice a year, maybe mm-hmm. in LA or up here. Yeah, and and, and try and try it out. 
with yep. the with the caveat that I don't. <laughs> I've developed all my own. <laughs> like yeah. I do this. There may be better ways to do all of this stuff, right? So, yeah. or a technical name for what I do. You know, like you'll do something you're like, and then I do this, like, yeah, and then, you're right. And the kids <laughs> that have taken like a first year art class is like, yeah, duh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm sure that would happen, and I'm sure the things that I'm doing that there's probably some like easy solution for them that I just don't know, mm -hmm. but whatever embarrassment I would feel about like being called out on that, I'd probably be like benefit so much by that. Like, yeah, oh, exactly. cool. like uh, your, your tuition is free now. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, or do you want to teach a class? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the old, yeah. You stay late and tell me, tell me, your, yeah. tell me the, yeah. Tell me everything you learned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. What's this called? Yeah, right. Thank you. You're like taking notes from the student. Yeah. I've done a lit. We, when I lived in LA, we did, uh, like portrait painting mm -hmm. oh, okay. every week for a while with Sean. And them or yeah. It was Sean Barber and Carl Dobsky and like oh, a sweet. lot of great painters, a lot of tattooers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we, there was no, there was no instruction or anything. It was just a free paint a model thing. Mm -hmm. But it was the first time I, it was the first time I'd ever worked in a room with other people at the same time, which mm. was bizarre yeah. and really fun. <laughs> Had yeah. you watched people oil paint before much? No. Oh, wow. Never. <laughs> not outside of like YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> which is usually not that great. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of people that are decent, but a lot of like, I mean, there's a lot of great ones. It's just a, it's a, not a very, for some reason for me, like watching on the computer is not, it just doesn't work that well. Yeah. And that's often they're kind of sped up or like right. maybe the artist is talking and they're not good at it or right. yeah. it's just weird classical music in the background. That's driving me nuts. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it just didn't work. Doesn't work as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the most part, watching people paint on a screen is really boring too. Yeah, and I <laughs> for and whatever I can reason, imagine, yeah. like watch. I paint like the idea of watching myself paint just seems like that is insane. <laughs> yeah. Like it's yeah. so just like well, in six hours, this is gonna look great. Yeah, yeah. Just sit <laughs> sit tight. Yeah. And I also think you don't get to like interact, you know, with the, it's like if you're in a class and you're messing up, uh, you, you, the person teaching you would say like, oh, you should try this. But in the YouTube video, you just have to kind of absorb what they're telling you and then be mm -hmm. able to do it. It just doesn't seem yeah. like it's the best way of learning something. Yeah. Even yeah. being in that room with those guys and seeing like just how people set their palettes up was interesting yeah, to me. For sure. Yeah, that's definitely. like those, I think I can paint okay now but like those real real introductory like how do you clean your brushes how do you mm -hmm. set your palette up like that stuff i had to learn over like probably what was way too long a period of time right. oh, interesting. Yeah. and so it's cool to see and then the, the various ways that like the way dobsky sets his palette up is like just like whoa that's <laughs> fucking insane like it doesn't make any sense to me at all right he's yeah. coming from that academic background yeah right. totally. um, <laughs> So it's, it's cool. And I, and then I would try it, you know, and usually it wouldn't work, but it's cool, <laughs> it's cool to know it's a thing. It's yeah, an option. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really enjoy seeing on like your Instagram, you'll, you'll post like pictures of your palette or maybe it's on your story or something, but I'm always like, damn, those are some. Uh, yeah. I need to, I like to do that. Some more. interesting uh, things going on. In the yeah. Palette. And every once in a while I'll put a shot of the palette and put like a key for what everything is mm -hmm. mostly because people just ask me all the time. Right. For sure. Um, but also because I feel like that whenever somebody does that, an artist that I like when Lip King or something says like, I'm varnishing with this stuff, mm -hmm. I'll totally go like, oh, cool. I'm going to go buy that. And see right. it. yeah. Because it's, he's, I like his painting. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I kind of feel like I, it, maybe I owe it a little bit as far right. as like, that's how I learned to paint. So right. I should put as much out there as possible, yeah. like, especially the, all the surface prep stuff people ask me a lot about. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all yeah. so easy, but you just have to know it. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm sure you get it. Um, questions about painting on dye bond. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Have you worked on it before? I haven't, but it seems like an interesting surface to work on. Yeah. It's like, great. do you, um, do you prepare the surface at all? Yeah. Yeah. So dye bond for those listening, it's mm -hmm. a acrylic composite material is like mm -hmm. what the generic name for it is. And dye bond's a brand mm -hmm. made by 3M, but it was developed for like signage and bus stops and right. industrial uses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's acrylic sandwiched between two pieces of aluminum. And then those pieces of aluminum are usually lacquered. Um, okay. So they're super thin, but really rigid mm -hmm. and they're not porous. So they mm -hmm. can't warp. Nice. So nice, it's kind yeah. of like the best 
the best of both worlds. You get yeah. a hard surface, but it's not going to warp. It's also cheaper than wood. Mm-hmm. You don't have oh, to, right. you don't mm-hmm. have to cradle it mm-hmm. uh, because it's so rigid. Yeah, you have right. to frame it obviously because it's so thin. But uh-huh. you know, getting a a thirty six by forty eight birch panel made is crazy expensive, and you have to make sure it's all sealed so right. it doesn't get moisture and like. Right. It's not the most durable thing in the world either. Mm -hmm. So it can crack or like get chipped. So Daibon kind of, for me, solves, it's way cheaper. Yeah. It solves all that. That's Um, awesome. So I either prep it with uh, acrylic gesso, usually just a bunch of coats. Okay. Nice. And that, because you paint on Daibon, it saved you a lot of uh, extra damage on the thing that happened with you at the FedEx. FedEx, I don't know if you want to get into that at all, but I'm super interested in what happened with that. So I had a show in New York at Lionsburg Gallery in January, Mm -hmm. um, and they were sending me all the paintings back in February um, because they couldn't store them. And the, well, all the paintings that didn't sell. And the, which is most of the paintings. (laughs) But so they sent, they sent, no, oh. <laughs> most of the things came back, uh, which is just a sad detail. Yeah. <laughs> so they sent me like five different, a couple boxes, a couple crates of the paintings back. Okay. Um, and one of the crates, which was had three of the biggest, the three biggest paintings from the show just didn't show up. Mm. Um, and after like five or six days of calling FedEx and trying to f- track the, package down they told me that they were just calling it lost and that i should just file for a file for a uh insurance insurance claim Uh yeah Hmm. and also get a get a new one from the manufacturer they kept telling me on the phone even though i kept going like it's not it's not i didn't want it's not a thing they can't get me another one like Uh, yeah it was i'm the manufacturer (laughs) so anyway i had a, a giant crate of very expensive paintings that ended up in north carolina at a at a fabric supplier wow. somehow the the crate was damaged i think by them i think the i think the people that received the box wrecked the crate when they were opening it uh-huh. oh, this is my right. guess because there's no information on any of this right because like, they had no idea what was inside it right they just got a giant crate right. now my name is on the side of the crate and uh-huh. my address uh-huh. which is weird yeah that they still destroyed it opening it yeah so when fedex finally located the package they had to then go pick up the paintings mm. and repack them. Oh, which I was like, Oh, this is not good at all. <laughs> yeah. This is after two weeks of them being gone and missing entirely. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, and everybody that I was in contact with in FedEx, I emailed, it was like, these are paintings. Just please make sure they're packed. Well, like, because I know they left New York in a wood crate with styrofoam packed, right. like great. Um, you know, and of course they just threw them in a box and sent them back. Oh, it's like sure. literally no yeah. packing material whatsoever. So it's That's three, awful. three paintings in the frames, just back to back. Uh, oh, like, a, and then they shipped a ground on the way back. Yeah. So they were, all the framings were wrecked. Did they, all put the a, frames were wrecked. Did they at least put a fragile sticker? No, on no, no, oh my. no, 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 no. Wow. No fragile sticker. No, no popcorn. <laughs> no f- anything. It was <laughs> wild. Um, I'm surprised they didn't throw a rattlesnake in there. I mean, it, it was it was like comically worse. funny how, how how little they cared about it. Right. At every point in this process, they were awful. Wow! And it's and I've actually always used FedEx because I've heard horror stories about UPS from another artist. Yeah, really? yeah, who got who had a paint had a box of paintings just gone. Hmm. Yeah, and I kind of hear them every now and then, and like it's always something I expect to happen to me because the shit kind of tends to happen to me. Yeah. Um. So they were, all the frames were wrecked and then the edges of the paintings were all kind of chipped. Mm. But, uh, and one of the paintings had a bunch of scratches in the front because of the, the wire for the painting in front of it was oh, right. directly yeah. on the surface of the, <laughs> yeah, the I painting. Saw that. Yeah. But like, had they been on wood or canvas, they would have been garbage. Mm-hmm. So that was nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. So it's yeah. Dive, on. Yeah. <laughs> dive on for the win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's brutal yeah it is yeah uh, have you ever had anything happen to t- that 
like that to you, Josh? No, we we did have. I remember, I think I've talked about it before where MJ sent a package to Afghanistan. Oh, that's right. And then, like a couple years later, it came back, and it was like, I think that guy's dead. Whoa. Yeah, and the box was like, be, it looked like I want to know the story of the box because it looked <laughs> did like it go it, to a co- like a like a collector in there. Yeah, so someone oh, bought wow. bought a painting from her and. She sent it to Afghanistan and it was like very weird and, uh, but he like paid for the shipping and all that stuff. And, and yeah, and it just came back a couple of years later and she was like, what is this? And, and it was in the same box. Yeah. Wow. And the box was beaten up. That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> back, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's the only time anything weird with shipping is uh, actually, I had a show in DC and, but it had to do with the gallery. They, they had a weird address and. Mm. Oh, thanks and, Scott. It's yeah. a real dodgy shipping artwork is the, one of the worst parts about this job. It yeah. really is. It's so nerve wracking. Yeah. It'd be nice when they have like teleporters. I've used, there's, I mean, there's artwork shipping companies that mm-hmm. I've used every now and then that are great, hmm. but they're just, it's just really expensive. Right. So it's hard to justify it with the whole you know, everything else that you have to worry about with, right. with shows. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will probably be going that route in the future <laughs> or just sure. like, I have a show in uh, June in Denver that I will be driving. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Is it's it at a one. band gallery? When yeah. I was? Oh, okay. Yeah. Sweet. Oh, yeah. Nice. With, with really John like Wentz. Gallery. Oh, sweet. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Oh yeah. yeah. He was talking about that cause he's in France right now and he was like, I gotta, I probably shouldn't be going to France. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's cool. <laughs> So that's a pretty dope show then. Yeah. yeah it's a, it's uh me and John Wentz and Aliza. Nice. He's a Nova and okay. uh, Martinez, Jose Martinez. Okay. From nice. Denver, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm not sure where he's located. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah, when was that? That's in June 2nd. I think okay. It yeah. Are you, uh, are you doing pretty good on time? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super, super behind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, mostly because of that painting I did with the fabric it just like took my whole life. Oh. Uh, um, <laughs> so I'll be, I'm luckily they're going to let me put in paintings from last year in it, mm-hmm. which was great. Yeah. That's cool. I hate just showing paintings once and then they yeah. just disappear. Yeah. I know. I've had an idea for a show about that where you, it's like a, call it something like second chances or something and then have all artists that have like a painting they always thought was better or, yeah, it yeah. seems like galleries are being better with that now. Like yeah. I know Jeremy Mann's done some like kind of retrospective type shows. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh-huh. where he just—I mean, when you've been painting for ten years or twelve years, you you start to just like accumulate old works, right? And not having, not being able to like show them sometimes is silly. Yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah, I always thought if you had a show like that, like a group show where you told artists, like, send me like a painting that didn't sell that you think is really great, you'd end up with like an amazing show with like some of the best artwork. Probably. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't. I'm not. Yeah. I mean, galleries always want the new stuff because I think yeah. they think that if people are going to buy them, they would have been bought already. But I don't think yeah. that's true at all. No. <laughs> so that's where. Yeah. How many art... times have you moved a painting to a different gallery and it sold right away? Yeah. I mean, I sell <laughs> old stuff all the time but, yeah um yeah so i, I mean yeah. i think that's where art and music differs it's like you know music music is like everyone wants to hear the hits you know right and then um art is kind of like it's almost like comedy you know you can't tell the same joke twice it's like once you've heard right. it then <laughs> yeah i mean there's a yeah they're, they they definitely like fork in the road there yeah. it's like the art has it there's a there's a thing there's a a yeah. physical thing to buy music yeah. <laughs> you don't actually have a physical thing to buy anymore yeah, for sure. yeah exactly <laughs> especially yeah especially nowadays yeah. Hmm. uh but yeah cool well i think we're right. probably close to the end uh we do we want to get into any of the questions yeah we should probably uh, we asked them to ask questions okay <laughs> and we feel like we're obligated to do so because uh, <laughs> we kept missing them and well i think we people naturally get, people just... get mad at you i don't think so but i think they just end up not Wanting to ask questions, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> like, why should I ask a sense, question yeah. if you don't ask the guest? Yeah, I think we may have answered a bunch of them just naturally in the course of conversation. But yeah, we're super look- good at interviews, I guess. <laughs> 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 Any about dragons? 
uh, how many times has Instagram censored your work? Oh, so, yeah. So many times. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was kind of interested in the fact that we have to, uh, like, we, you know, when we promote your work, I've never been censored. So I'm like, right. Did you get censored when you put my stuff up? Oh, well, I haven't put it up yet, but I'm okay. like, this might no. be my first time. <laughs> they've, they've, it's been a little better lately. Okay. Okay. I went through a good, maybe like six months of not getting fucked with. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mostly when, when I wrote, don't center this uh-huh. people s- didn't flag it which is okay. a weird thing um but then just when i was posting the fedex stuff one of the paintings has a boob in it and they got t- taken down <laughs> it's really it it's FedEx. super super frustrating <laughs> yeah um all the instagram stuff these days is just i'm trying not to fixate on it too much because yeah. it's mm-hmm. so fucking frustrating for sure um yeah. The censorship and then also that just their al- algorithm has really <laughs> messed things up a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Just the fact that it's like, can I live? Yeah, and I have to s- depend on it, which yeah. is so irrational. Right. Like, like, why Why should I expect that Instagram is better? Yeah. Like, it's not, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very huge company. Yeah. But it's been, it's so key and helpful that now that it's like gotten shitty, it's just like, fuck yeah, <laughs> like, right you, know, yeah. you, you get to depend on it and then yeah. you're like it's something like heroin it's mm-hmm. definitely like an addiction it's an addiction but it's also like the i mean from a business standpoint it's the best yeah it's the best like way to promote thing. yourself yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean it's been so good for artists yeah and yeah. You, you the community that's built from instagram yeah, there's, and- i mean there's tons of artists that are making a living essentially off Instagram yeah. because they're, they're following, oh, which yeah. is super neat. But yeah. like, again, you're not in control at all. Yeah. And when they want to change the algorithm to favor, whatever it is it's doing now, which yeah. I'm not sure what it's doing, yeah. you know, it's, you're just going to, you have to just suck it up and take the hit until somebody steps up and makes the one that's like Vero, but not Vero. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know what I mean? I know. Like it's, it was so like, it's, there's such a, hunger for it in the marketplace it's so yeah. weird that yeah. somebody hasn't just filled it mm-hmm. yeah but and but the issue i have is like is say if there's another social media that fills instagram's uh, you know space because of their i don't know greed or whatever you want to call it then <clears throat> it's like w- when does it be when does this new thing do what instagram does to us like when mm-hmm. do, i feel like every social media kind of has mm-hmm. the same like we're gonna get them trapped right and then we're going to use advertisements to gain money uh and they're all gonna be kind of stuck where they i mean i like i yeah not. i don't know i think that might just be how it goes because yeah. it's yeah. it you have to have so much money to pay for this the databases yeah. that you have to have that you end up with a board and you have investors and then you have to appease those board and boards yeah. and investors and right, if exactly. your money doesn't keep going up people are going to get mad <laughs> and i feel like I'm, I'm not as mad with the advertisements as i am with the fact that you just are blocking people from seeing like you know it's like i'll see someone's post like four days after they post yeah, it yeah. Because, yeah i'm no. not mad at the ads either i, th- I that's fair totally fair play yeah it's the like the reach yeah that there's not a there's not a like they're just not it sucks that it's not open like we don't yeah. know what's happening we yeah. just know that everybody's like oh i'm just getting way less interaction than i used to get yeah. and that mm-hmm. sucks like yeah. you yeah. can't do anything about it yeah. and then people are trying to do all these silly you know ways to get around it like right. i'm gonna post on my story that i posted a post and then i'm just <laughs> annoying people right. you know what i mean <laughs> i didn't know people were doing that that's yeah because that's supposed to make it better for the algorithm but it's yeah. it's you know, yeah, and people sucks. are like, oh, you yeah. got to post at this time and you got to like uh-huh. be like, you have to talk to like people for an hour before you right. post or like yeah. all these like little it's, like It's a drag that you here. can't just, you know, how it was before when it was chronological and it was yeah. just, a, you know. That's, uh, yeah. But again, it's not, you know, why we yeah. expect it to be anything else. Yeah, we don't own this product, so we can't tell no. them how to. And I'm sure whatever they're doing is because it's better for the you know shareholders their bottom line yeah yeah, yeah. Hmm. for sure damn it <laughs> but yeah they censor me all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think you even made an instagram post about you being censored right? yeah yeah i have a bunch because uh-huh. i think it's funny like it's yeah. explicitly in their terms and conditions that artwork nudity is okay yeah and yeah then, and then and then 
artists keep getting censored because they have no they have no like review board. Did you right. ever did you ever take it as a compliment? No. I always wondered that. Like, would, would an artist ever be like, thank you, I did paint that boob super realistic. No. <laughs> no, because I know that, okay, like, I know it's not about that. Right. Like, I'm sure the amount of times I've been censored is not only because people thought they were photographs. Right. Where, and also, who gives a shit? But e- e- even if they were photographs. But at the same time, like, it's still censorship of art, which is just really fucking frustrating, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah, it just looks sure. bad. Like I paint, spent all this time on this painting and now I got to put a black, li- it's already three inches big, yeah. you know, yeah, <laughs> which exactly. is drag. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So it's frustrating. So I'm trying to be less dependent on it for sure. Yeah. 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 So I don't really know how to be not no, dependent really on it. pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but kind of on that um, same train. Uh, so Monty guy asked about, uh, so he says, there's never been an era in which artists can self-promote with such ease. So is a 50% gala commission still relevant when well-known artists can sell and deal with collectors directly? What will entice someone to have their prices so inflated and only earn half? So I guess it's like, what do you think a gallery is really is what that boils down to? That's a, that's a great question. <laughs> um, I mean, to some extent, I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I have 50%. I can't imagine that 30 years ago, if I was an artist, I would have thought that that was cool no it was, either. Yeah. yeah. It seems like a lot. Yeah, for sure. But back then, even it was less of a cut. Um, for was gal- it? Yeah. I oh, think it was oh, 70, wow. 30 for, for a long time. Oh, I'd be okay. When with I that. talk to that people yeah, mm-hmm. that uh, I didn't have been that. around since like the eighties, it, it, it like slowly has been like their galleries has been taking more and oh, more weird. of their cut. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Uh, the, yeah. the, uh, I mean, I think, think it's just a matter of like how what the gallery does for you like yeah if the gallery is if the gallery is really proactive and pushing you as like a as an artist and helping mm-hmm. you in general with your career like the showing with them helps you in other cities and they're good at promoting you and like because there's lots of other benefits of doing a show besides just selling work mm-hmm. right it's just like elevating your you know how visible you are to people mm-hmm. and the collectors and maybe they have collectors that you can't get to or right yeah so i think you have i think it's really now especially it's way just dependent on like like i think you can't make a blanket statement of whether that's like good or bad now i think if a gallery does a great job for you then right. maybe mm-hmm. that's worth 50 percent. Oh, no yeah. yeah but if that's they don't fun. then like be- and i've talked to a lot of artists these days that are like well I can sell two paintings to collectors directly Mm -hmm. for every, you know, and I have to sell four paintings in a show to make the same amount of money. And for a show, I'm killing myself to get it done. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and in that, and I kind of agree with that too. Like Mm -hmm. the, the, the the payoff there doesn't really seem like it makes sense. Right. Um, So, yeah, I think it's, I think it's just really subjective Mm -hmm. as I, slow down with the painting and like spend more time on each painting and less uh hopefully have less like deadline stuff coming up Mm -hmm. yeah um probably have to think more about that yeah Mm. yeah i think that's kind of the scenario i'm in right now where the paintings are taking so much longer than before it goes like well then what then becomes worth what is this painting worth now you know and and am i willing to share that worth with someone that i don't think has put in the amount of work yeah. as i have yeah and print and mm-hmm. like it used when i first started showing there were still like a, still money went to publication like for advertising right. so there was some money yeah. that the the gallery obviously has staff and in, in real estate and like they're a business right. mm-hmm. but they were also like promoting the show with things that cost money yeah. mm-hmm. and now the galleries are also using their social networks which yeah. does not cost money mm-hmm. yeah so there's only- a different there's a different like you know the the amount of money that goes into your show specifically is now different right but the, and, but the cut that they get is still the same and the artist is also kind of like uh you know i feel like there's an obligation that the artist promotes the show as well on their social media right and the artist is, often has more yeah, reach exactly yeah. and more reach of the people that are into their work by you know by far so, absolutely okay. so yeah. So you would think that th- that would allow, you know, it's like the, you know, Kevin Hart, he would, he has like this huge social media and people would say mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, pro- the, promote the movie. And he's like, 
no, pay me to promote the right. movie. You can pay <laughs> me and I'll be a promotional, my promotional company charges this much because I have this big of a reach. So right. pay me to promote my own movie, right? <laughs> which is kind of the, like a great idea. Um, What's well, fair. Yeah. 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 yeah it's for it's sure. Fair. I mean, I'm sure the rock gets paid all the money in the world oh, whenever sure. he talks about a specific thing Yeah, mm-hmm. and then because he's got all the, you know, all the whatever people. million followers <laughs> yeah. he has. Yeah. 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 Uh, hopefully he doesn't run for president, but <laughs> I'll take him now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever. He's still a win, but... <laughs> yeah, at least he's charismatic. <laughs> uh, but yeah, <laughs> was there any other question? Um, most of them, all the other ones, we pretty much answered. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, any other questions? Sorry, people. <laughs> <laughs> you missed the bus. Uh, well, nice. I think that's probably the show. So we'll yeah. call it there. Do you have anything you want to promote? I mean, no, not really. I right. just you show in show June and out, bend. Yeah. 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 Cool. Which so, I'll have new paintings for. That's about <laughs> awesome. It. If you're yeah. in Denver or anywhere yeah. near it. Yeah. Uh, awesome. And we'll put your stuff on social media. So if you guys are listening, you'll be able to find it. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that. Thank you so much Great. for thank doing you. this. Yeah, thank yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, this has been waiting to dry. Bye. <laughs>